Funding for the Rex Ball and the meeting of the courts of Rex and Comus is made possible through generous community support. There's no place like New Orleans at Mardi Gras. At First Horizon, we are excited to keep finding ways to support the city. This uniquely New Orleans celebration and special broadcasts on WYES-TV that capture the heart of our city. Mr. and Mrs. William F. Grace Jr. are proud to support this broadcast of the Rex Ball and the Meeting of the Courts and all of the other quality programs on WYS. Hail Rex, hail Comus, and happy Mardi Gras. Mr. and Mrs. Michael Bright White are proud to support WYS and this broadcast of the Rex Ball and wishes everyone a happy Mardi Gras. Hail Rex. CapTrust, Bespoke High Net Worth, Family Office, and Institutional Investment Services. More information is at captrust.com. Dreams. Dreams keep us growing. Dreams keep us thriving. Dreams keep us believing in the power of teamwork. Hancock Whitney, your dream, our mission. Support is provided by the law firm of Jones Walker, established in 1937 with offices throughout the U.S., providing a comprehensive range of legal services to a wide range of local, regional, national, and international client base. Online at joneswalker.com. The Rink, a unique collection of shops and select offices located in the heart of the Garden District. Ample parking available. The Rink, a historic space with a modern vision. Hello, I'm Emmett Dupas, lead partner at Bienville Capital Group, where we specialize in finding solutions to help companies and their employees reach their financial goals. Brennan's Restaurant offers modern interpretations of classic Creole cuisine served in Brennan's elegant dining rooms. Brennan's in the French Quarter, 417 Royal Street. Dawn Services would like to hail Rex and is proud to support this special program. Premium Parking has a space for you. Easy and convenient parking all across the city. Find more information on the app or at premiumparking.com. Adler's, honored to be part of New Orleans tradition since 1898. Also brought to you by Arthur J. Gallagher Risk Management Services. Any challenge, any risk, anywhere in the world. Additional support by Bellwether Technology. Chaff McCall, proud to celebrate Carnival and honor the monarchs of Mardi Gras and the tradition of service before self. Fidelity Bank, celebrating 115 years of service. Hail Rex, hail Comas, happy Mardi Gras. Gallo Mechanical, commercial air conditioning and plumbing. Design, build, and service for over 70 years. Gallo Mechanical. Home Care Solutions, compassionate in-home elder care to extend your loved one's independence. The Conwell Family Foundation and Felix's Restaurant and Oyster Bar, where oyster lovers can belly up to the bar. Experience small home retirement living through Poitras Home Reimagined and the Greenhouse Project. Standard Mortgage, helping Louisiana families purchase homes since 1925. Additional funding provided by Jonathan C. McCall and the Galatoire Foundation. from the Sheridan Hotel and the New Orleans Marriott Hotel on historic Canal Street bordering the French Quarter. WIS presents the Rex Ball and the meeting of the courts of Rex and Comus. And now, here is Peggy Scott Laborde. Good evening, I'm Peggy Scott Laborde and welcome to the 2023 Rex Ball and the meeting of the courts of Rex and the mystic crew of Comus. Tonight, we'll meet Carnival Royalty, past and present, and we'll visit with the King of Zulu. This year's Rex has already had a busy day. Let's see what he's up to the rest of the year. 
Enrico Fioli, the 2023 King of Carnival, attended what he thought was a typical meeting, only to discover it was anything but. As the meeting's getting started and uh, my friend uh, starts to talk about this philanthropic plan, he's cut off mid-sentence by one of the other attendees, whom I realized uh, at that moment, after his comment, um, why he was there. Uh, and he happened to be the Rex captain. Uh, he said, gentlemen, I believe that our time here could be best served if we devoted it to uh, putting our heads together and determining who could be the next king of carnival. And I realized that they were talking about me as they all stood up and started to point at me. Uh, so it was quite the revelation, quite unexpected, um, quite humbling. While this year's King of Carnival has devoted much of his life to philanthropy, he also serves as the director of Tulane University's Center for Inter-American Policy and Research. His Majesty holds a Master of Arts degree in Latin American Studies and a PhD in Political Science, both from Tulane. He teaches courses in environmental and Central American politics. Born in San Jose, Costa Rica, the King of Carnival is also the executive director of a Tulane Research Center there. His dedication to the betterment of his adopted city is strong. The list of organizations Rex has been directly involved in is a long one. At the Greater New Orleans Foundation, I was involved in a number of roles. I happened to be active there right after Katrina. Uh, which was a crucial time uh, for the Greater New Orleans Foundation because of uh, the tremendous need that existed in the city uh, for philanthropic action. Eventually, I, I also uh, became the chair. As the co-chair of the Zamuri Foundation, the Audubon Institute has been a particular focus. Our family has been linked to the Audubon Institute for many years. Uh, my wife and I are the fourth generation of the family involved uh, with Audubon. Um, and we have supported many things. In particular, Jaguar Jungle at the zoo is something that our family has promoted. Jaguar Jungle provides opportunities for children to understand Central America uh, and, and Latin America as a whole. Other organizations this year's Rex has been active with include the Bureau of Governmental Research and Catholic Charities of New Orleans. While recognizing the importance of uh, carnival and the pageantry and, and what it means, and I think Rex does a, a wonderful job of uh, preserving and, and enlarging uh, that heritage, but apart from it, it also uh, raises consciousness about the importance of being philanthropically and civically uh, engaged. And uh, what it's done through the Pro Bono Publico Foundation, I think is exemplary. His Majesty and his wife Stephanie have two grown children. Connections to the Rex organization are strong. His wife's paternal grandfather, Roger T. Stone, and father, Samuel Z. Stone, were Rex members. Daughter Ileana was a maid in the Rex Court in 2013. This year's parade theme, Palio de Siena, celebrating an historic Tuscan horse race, especially resonated. One of the king's grandparents was born in the region. This year's Rex speaks three languages and is an avid cyclist and runner. He also enjoys hiking, tennis, and hunting. Whether at work or play, Rex's devotion to the citizens of New Orleans is strong. Although we talk about a king and a queen of carnival, we have to remember that what really matters uh, are the people out there, the people on the streets. There are no distinctions. So carnival helps to bring us, bring us together and I hope that's what this carnival uh, achieves. And welcome again to our live broadcast. Joining me this evening are Errol Laborde, executive editor for Renaissance Publishing and author of the book Mardi Gras Chronicles of the New Orleans Carnival. Hey, E. Hey, Peg. You did. Hey. hey. And Will French. Will is the historian archivist for the Rex organization, and he works on preserving and researching the Rex organization's history with a special emphasis lately, and he'll have news about that, on digital and video archives. Hey, 
Will? Thanks, Peg. Thanks for having me here again. This is great and a warm welcome to our viewers from around the Crescent City and around the world. We have a terrific broadcast in store for you tonight, which includes performances by the Marine Corps Marching Band, the Italian flag wavers of Spandiatori San Sepulcro, that's a tough one, uh, interviews with the King and Queen of Zulu, uh, the New Orleans uh, Sheriff Susan Hudson, the Italian Consul General, and some great stories about rediscovering lost carnival treasures. So thank you for joining us as we close out Mardi Gras 2023 with the meeting of the courts of Rex and Comus. And we have so much to talk about. First of all, yesterday, Lundi Gras, lots of action over at Riverwalk. We're going to show you a bit of that footage. Here we go. Here is Rex arriving. I do hereby ordain and decree the following. <laughs> that during the great celebration, all commercial endeavors be suspended throughout the realm. <laughs> and the mayor, our mayor Latoya, Trout. Your Majesty, the Ambassador, Her Excellency Maria Angela Zappia. This is Marian, Ambassador Maria Angela Zappia, and she is the Italian Ambassador to the United States. Our theme is very much Italian this year. To have the Italian ambassador come down and be a part of it was very special. It's fantastic. It's wonderful. Please allow me to present to you King Zulu. Yes, King Zulu. This is always such a special moment when Rex and Zulu can be together, arm in arm, in front of the city to declare Mardi Gras. King Zulu Spears. Very good. All right. And as always, there are fireworks too. And then a lot of members of Rex got up very early <laughs> this morning for the Royal Run. Any, that's a real tradition, isn't it? Yeah, a former Rex, actually he was a former captain too, a, man, a great man for the Rex organization. Uh, Bowden Riley um, thought of it the year he was Rex. And so every year on the Mardi Gras morning, the king and the queen, with all the other duties they have, have to go out and do a Royal Run. <laughs> And uh, I understand and, and Ben Dupuy was the MC this year for the first time. Look at this. It's still and they make, a, they make a distinction between a royal race and a royal run. They said if it was a royal race, the queen would always win. So this is like everybody is the same right there. Well, and she did win today. And, uh, and Rex says that she's just as fast as she is smart. And this one is very, very smart. So that'll tell you something. Here we go. Leggings, Just, too, uh, those lavender leggings. Happy Mardi Gras. Happy Mardi Gras. Oh. Oh. And then, not too far away, here we go, on uh, Claiborne Avenue near the Rex Den, was a, a special flag ceremony, right, Will? It was. Uh, this year we were honoring David Schulenkamp, uh, who was a member of the, uh, the U.S. Army from 1971 to 1975. And we had a special invocation by Monsignor Christopher Nalti which is typical. We usually have him bless the fleet, bless the floats. But what a beautiful morning it was. Lots of action. And this is all even before the parade. You know, a recently discovered film of the 1898 Rex Parade allows us a chance to see Mardi Gras Day, what it was like almost 125 years ago. To this day, that year, the celebration was actually February 22nd. Diane Mack takes us back to that time. Recently discovered film of the 1898 Rex Parade is a highlight of the Louisiana State Museum's show in the Presbyterian that celebrates the Rex organization's 150th anniversary. The search for the celluloid relic was a decades-long quest. I had heard about this film years and years ago from Arthur Hardy, who was, I think, the first person to discover the existence of this film. You know, we were hoping that it would be out there somewhere. The search started in the late 80s. There were film all kinds of of stock footage, newsreels, and things like that, broke to every one of them. A, you gotta be kidding, this couldn't possibly have been done in 1898. B, if it is, you're never gonna find it. 
After the Rex exhibit opened in 2022, Rex archivist and historian Will French took up the search. I happen to have a friend who's in film preservation, uh, newly hired by the Smithsonian. So that was my first call, Mackenzie Roberts Beasley. It was about 24 hours later that I got a call back from Mackenzie saying that she had located what she thought was going to be a viewable copy of it in Amsterdam. The I Film Museum of Amsterdam restored the 68 millimeter high quality format film produced by American Mutoscope and Biograph, a company that sent crews everywhere in the late 1800s and circulated films all over the world. The theme of the 1898 Rex Parade was Harvest Queens. All the floats had to do with crops and different products from around the world. My favorite float is pineapples because you can see these giant pineapples on the back of the floats. The men on the float are wearing costumes that have sort of a pineapple look to them. So there's a lot of creativity and even uh, maybe a little bit of humor that you see in this parade. The film presented several mysteries, including bells that appeared in the parade. Before each float, there's a man carrying a placard with a bell on it and the name of the, of the float uh, is written on the placard. There was no parade in 18. 75, and this was the 25th parade that Rex had rolled. The silver bells were symbolic of Rex's 25th anniversary, and when we went back and looked at the invitations and, and other artwork from that year, it was clear that silver bells were literally everywhere. For Mardi Gras historians, perhaps the most remarkable aspect of the film is footage of a live bouffe gras instead of the paper mache version of today. The bouffe gras was a part of the Rex parade from the very beginning. 1872 and all the way up through 1901. To our astonishment, right here in moving footage is the live bull that was on the back of a float, surrounded by handlers, pulled by mules, and he was surprisingly calm. It's interesting to note that at this point in carnival history, riders aren't throwing anything from the floats to the well-attired crowd. People were dressed uh, to the nines, as they say, men in top hats and suits and women uh, just dressed beautifully, and they weren't going there to catch anything, they were going there to be entertained. You have the people riding on the floats who are teasing the crowd and dancing a little bit. So they're really performing in beautiful costumes on the floats. The King's Float is captured majestically in the two-minute clip. The Rex organization is a small organization. The descendants of the people who were shown in that film are still around today. The King of Carnival in 1898 was Charles A. Farwell. So I was able to, to place a call to Charles Farwell's granddaughter, Lynn Farwell, white and she was just so excited to be able to see moving images of her grandfather. One of the things that we realized once we found the film is that it's not only the earliest moving footage of Mardi Gras, it is the earliest moving footage ever captured in New Orleans that still survives today. The film's significance was recognized this year when it was added to a list of the most important movies ever made. I got an email from the curator at the I Film Museum sharing with me that the film had not only been nominated, but had been accepted for inclusion in the Library of Congress's National Film Registry. It's more than memorabilia. I mean, it's, it's history as we kind of thought it existed, but now we can, we can really, really see it. These huge crowds were there just to see the beautiful works of public art on those floats rolling through the streets of New Orleans. That feels good to know that we do it the same way today and that people still love it just as much as they did back then. In fact, they loved it back then just as much as we love it now. All right, we're so glad that Dr. Stephen Hales is with us, the Rex historian emeritus, but he'll always be on this show as far as I'm concerned because you're such an important part of it. And of course, wrote a history of Rex in the more recent past. But let's talk about the parade and this incredible theme. It's wonderful. Um, the Palio de Siena, as we developed this, we realized how many parallels there are between Siena and its celebration and Carnival in New Orleans. 
consumes the city, it almost defines the city. But this rivalry that goes back so many centuries between neighborhoods, Contrade, each with their own images and colors and flags, traditions, to capture all that in a, in a parade was a challenge, but I think we more than met it. Yeah, so we're going to show a few scenes uh, of the parade. and. Uh, and it is, it's a city of neighborhoods. So let's, of course, start with the toast with, for our regs. Okay, over by the Hotel Intercontinental. Mm -hmm. And for my queen. And don't they have 17 neighborhoods? Yes. And New Orleans has 17 wards. That's right. So, <laughs> yep. I, I think ours don't go, go back quite as many centuries. And here we go. There here we are, the Palio yes. di Siena. We had the lovely opportunity uh, on Saturday to welcome the Italian ambassador to the United States to the den. She wanted to see each of those floats up close and to look at those images, and she uh, she loved what she saw. We've had many contacts with the with the, uh, citizens of Siena who've heard about the parade and wanted us to join. And that float is a nod to the Etruscans who originally settled that hill town uh, uh, city that became Siena. The Pope Pius Piccolomini Pope, um, a who was major from Siena? Siennese family. Yes. And uh, after those uh, floats, we really begin to have the, the, the individual contrada, walking heads, walking figures, part of old tradition. Uh -huh. We try to be innovative, but at the same time, Rex proudly is the anchor of traditional Mardi Gras. Well, and I just love the fact that uh, those floats represent a neighborhood, a series of neighborhoods, and each of them with their own animal oh, they do. depiction. Too. They do. I, I heard from a gentleman who was a proud bruco. That's the caterpillar contrada. And he uh, he said, you have to understand that, that these neighborhoods have been at war, and the Palio is our battle. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> well, let's uh, talk about what was thrown from those floats very generously. Yes. Yeah, so again, we had signature throws, individual throws for each of the the, the floats, and uh, you know this has be become for collectors. We are all, are many. Each float has its own. Each own. own. We need and to emphasize that. You've got that. to have the whole collection. So <laughs> people are passionate about that. If they don't get one of each, uh, they go home disappointed. Yes, absolutely. Yep. Now let's go into I think the beautiful paper ephemera, the yeah. proclamation. Yeah, paper art is part of Mardi Gras, and uh, the old uh, art forms were beautiful, and we've recreated those in our invitations, our ball programs and so on. But Henry Caselli created a beautiful watercolor uh, in keeping with the, 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 the theme this year, a, a racing horse uh, draped with the carnival colors. Henry Caselli is one of our great artists in New Orleans, known nationally and internationally. Uh, absolutely beautiful portrayal and a unique art print that, uh, that captures this thing. Yes, and then there's the edict. There are these specific pieces of paper here. Yes, indeed. Uh, and, you know, all invitations of the edict commanding, this goes all the way back, uh, commanding everyone to come to New Orleans and celebrate Mardi Gras. You know, I don't know what they were thinking when they sent the first edicts out, but people showed up. So uh, <laughs> we still do that. Rex proclaims carnival on Twelfth Night, and uh, that message goes out now on the Internet and the World Wide Web, and uh, people learn about our celebration, and this is an anchor of our tourism industry. And how wonderful to have a bulletin depicting what the floats will look like. That's yeah. really become a standard. Again, bringing uh, back an old tradition. Uh, it, Matthew uh, Hales created the uh, the corner art is actually taken from a, a, one of the banners uh, that, uh, in the 19th century that was won by one of the contrada. So, uh, each of the floats depicted there. Uh, Caroline Thomas's beautiful art, royal artist, creates our sketches and then builds from those. Uh, Caroline Thomas is the only artist I know in Rex history who both has done the, the design sketches but then actually works in the den painting those floats. Incredible. And then the invitation. The invitation. Again, Matthew Hales created this. Many beautiful themes there. You'll see the individual shields and coats of arms of each of the 17 Cotrade and depictions from the 19th century of this uh, remarkable horse race. And then the ball program. The I ball know program a lot, uh, but you're uh, doing it's great. in a similar <laughs> format, but also this year includes uh, many references to Siena, to Italy, and to uh, the, the celebration of the Palio di Siena. And also, I know you also wanted to give a nod to the fact that in the early days of the Palio, there were actually parades and, and floats, and you're yes. going to show us uh, a they few. They do. Uh -huh. uh, the, the, the 
horse race may be the focus, but the pageantry and the floats representing each of these uh, neighborhoods, each of the Contrade. Uh, Look, that is beautiful. amazing. It, and this is just a sketch. I'm sure the, the uh, whoever had to create the float out of that uh, worked long and hard. But this does, is not unsimilar to the sketches we see from the golden age of Carnival. Yes. So there's a lot Perfect. in parallel here. And something else that we want to celebrate, Eric, Last year we celebrated the 125th anniversary of the founding of Rex, but the first year they didn't have a ball as such. Yeah, they didn't have a ball for the second yeah. year. Uh -huh. And so this is the 125th anniversary uh -huh. of, of, of the Rex ball. Uh -huh. and, the, uh, and it was also, therefore, the founding of the, uh, the first Rex queen, uh, who was Mrs. <laughs> Walker Fern. Walker Fern was a guy from Mobile. Her name was Fanny Hewitt. And uh, Walker Fern had met her in, uh, in Texas, and, as, and she was married. And that was uh, uh, I think the only married woman uh, uh, that they had is Rex and, and uh, the famous line that she said she was it was a surprise that she was elected. She said I didn't even have my best dress, uh, my best dress that night. You know, <laughs> her so, her yeah. second best black dress she said when yeah. she um, her uh, descendants have been really clear that she did not go there expecting to be queen of carnival. Uh, and as you say Earl she was um, I think just 23, 24 years old and the mother of three when she was uh, when she knelt before the <laughs> king of carnival and uh, and fumbled to get her bonnet off so she could receive the crown of the first uh, queen of carnival and we have her picture proudly hanging in the queen's gallery at the den well Stephen, as always it's so great to have you with us nice Tradition. to be with you peggy okay thank Mary, you. happy mardi gras thank you take care thank you and rexes from the past of course um, have their own special memories let's hear from last year's monarch james reese the third So Ellie White's family and my family are actually very, very old friends to the point where we used to even travel together on family trips when I was as young as four, five, and six years old. Uh, so it was a very special treat for me to share the throne with Queen Ellie and share the reign over Carnival with her this past year. Well, what's interesting is being on the King's float during Mardi Gras Day is much akin to a panoramic view of your entire life. What I mean by that is uh, I got to see people I hadn't seen in 40 years who I recognized immediately, folks I'd gone to kindergarten with or high school or college with. And uh, it, it was amazing. They were holding signs that said, Hail King James. Um, they were out there with their kids. It, it, was, it was really something special to see. There was a low-hanging tree. Now, Parks and Parkways is always very good about trimming some of the branches that they can, but these are very old trees, and some of these branches are too low to, uh, to trim. So at one point before hitting Jackson Avenue, the top or the crown of the Rex King's float caught on a tree. And uh, I heard this massive creaking noise and ripping and tearing noises, and I looked up only to find the crown had been almost lifted entirely off of the Rex King's float. Luckily, we went forward a few more feet, and the crown came crashing back down to rest uh, on top of uh, on top of the top of the float, which which was close enough to how it was supposed to be situated to allow us to finish the ride. So it was it was a scary time for sure. But I looked at the uh, the tractor driver. I said, "Look, don't worry about that crown. This crown's intact. So let's let's keep going and have fun." And so we fell in right behind Zulu and, and finished a great ride. It was it was a really really great day. You know, I often tell people that the Rex Ball uh, really is like a large family reunion that we're lucky enough to have and share with the public uh, via WIS in this broadcast. It's a special, special time where many generations of families come back and with friends celebrate the end of what is probably the greatest season uh, within our city's calendar year. And now let's go over to Will. Hey Peg, I'm here with Chief Warrant Officer Steve Talbot. This is one of the busiest men in Mardi Gras. Let me let him introduce himself. Well, thanks for that kind introduction. I really appreciate it. And, and thanks again for inviting me to talk with you today. Uh, we are busy. Um, Marine Force Reserve Band has been supporting parades and balls and other Mardi Gras events and carnival events for the last several weeks. Uh, really, since January 6th, I think was our first event. And uh, tonight is certainly an exciting capstone for us uh, to be here. So thanks so much. And this is your first year in New Orleans. This is my first year. That's right. It's been uh, absolutely amazing just taking in all the culture and seeing all the different crews come out and just the sense of community that's spurred from this event and uh, I'm really looking forward 
forward to next year and the year after that. Okay, so give me the rundown. Approximately how many parades do you all march in? Okay, so we do, this year we did 21 parades. Uh, but, you know, I have to confess, we did bring in some reinforcements. So we had the band from Camp Lejeune, North Carolina, the 2nd Marine Division Band. They came down to help us out, as well as our good friends over at the Quantico Marine Corps Band out of Virginia. Okay, so you don't have to put all those miles on one set of shoes. You can break it up a little bit. That's right, yeah. we all. I think we all made it through the season on one pair this year. Uh, something like 80 miles of parades, which is uh, pretty amazing. That, that is incredible. <laughs> um, so tell us about the, the Marine Forces Reserve Band sort of commitment to New Orleans. We, we tend to see you guys all the time. Yeah, I mean, I think we're affectionately known as uh, New Orleans Marine Band, Marine Corps Band New Orleans, some people refer to us as. Uh, you know, Marine Force Reserve Band, we just really love being a part of this community. And the events uh, aren't just limited to Carnival and Mardi Gras. Of course, we do uh, all kinds of parades and events throughout the year. We have Veterans Day events, Memorial Day events. Uh, some of our most well-attended events are at Christmas time, uh, where we have a Toys for Tots, which I'm sure you've heard before. We uh, support their efforts uh, bringing toys to uh, children across the region. So. And I've heard that some of your members, after they retire, they actually stay in New Orleans. Yes, this was one of the coolest things about coming here is that I was like, oh, I wonder if this is where I'm gonna end up putting down roots. Uh, so uh, Master Sergeant Brad Rarig, Master Sergeant Kevin Hunter, Chief Officer Mike Smith. I mean, this, these are some of uh, the city's beloved friends and certainly uh, beloved friends of mine as well that have chosen to stay here in their retirement. So I think it just really is a true testament to the excitement of New Orleans and just the sense of community again that that we all experience being a part of these musical events. Mr. Talbot, we are happy to have you here in New Orleans. We hope that you will plant roots and stay here in your retirement as well. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you very much for your service. Thank you so much. Back honor. to you, Peg. Thank you so much. And I am with Lane Kern, Jr. And this is his 37th year of providing the backdrop and putting everything together to be so beautiful, the setting, the royal setting. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you, Peggy. And here tonight. We actually started Saturday bringing everything in and it's a culmination of a lot of different things. It's backdrops, drapes, 3D props, obviously chandeliers. And maybe we can get some wide shots just to see the beauty and the scope of, uh, of the uh, wonderful chandeliers and the throne itself. Yes, yeah, the, uh, the chandeliers actually I've seen pictures from the 20s and these are the original chandeliers. Oh, that is incredible yeah. that they would be the original chandeliers. Huh? I, I, I know some of the crates actually go back to the 30s and 40s and uh, it's, it's just an amazing experience to be here. It's almost a spring-like setting, too, which I really like uh, very much. Uh -huh. You know, it's it's amazing what City does with their with their entire family, with the tradition that they do to carry on uh, with the Rex Ball. Uh huh. Yeah, that, that's amazing. Now, of course, Rex is not the only ball you do. Play. We start we start actually uh, on on the sixth of January, but uh, this week has been a, a whirlwind. Thursday was Hermes, and Friday Zulu, and Saturday and Dimian and Sunday Bacchus and yesterday Orpheus and obviously the culmination of this fortunately successful season is is, is Rex. And let's talk briefly about your dad because we, we, we have to always keep him in our memory. Yeah, well, you know, Lane what can Kern I say? Senior. Uh -huh. What can I say? I guess one of the greatest um, honors you can get is to have somebody talk about your dad. It's the last thing they'll say is he made me laugh and made me smile. And I think he had such an exuberance and a vibrant personality that uh, he brought his, 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 his ideas to life. Yes. And, you know, the other thing, of course, that wonderful connection with Rex and with your dad, too, because the captain, of course, Darwin Fenner, sending a very young artist, very excited, um, energetic artist to Via Reggio, Italy, to learn about float uh, making. And then the, the, the view of Rex and the look of Rex totally changed. You know, it's, uh, I remember back in the mid-70s, I was on top of the floats painting, and he'd say, one day, son, you know, but I think what he's done in regards to bringing a lot of the creativity from Via Reggio and from different parts, Venice, and bringing it here, it's really been, uh, it's been a showcase of his efforts, and obviously I want to thank Rex and, and YS for bringing this to life to the people that not only got to see this, or this side behind the curtain, so to speak, of the shows. Well, congratulations on all your success. Well, by the grace of God, a lovely wife and great family, he's done well by me. Thank you. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you very much. My Appreciate pleasure. God bless you. Here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, YS. And now 
uh, we're going to go and tell you a little bit about our Queen's memories, very, very special memories held very strongly because she's pursuing many college studies. Volunteerism, though, is key. Let's take a look at the line Finlay Gamilla. The 2023 Queen of Carnival, Eveline Finlay Gamilla, is the daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Moylan Field Gamilla, Jr. Known as Evie, she is a senior at the University of Virginia, majoring in computer science with a minor in economics. Her Majesty loves horseback riding, which ended up figuring prominently into how she was told she would be the queen of Carnival. My parents were up in Charlottesville for Parents Weekend, and we went out to my grandmother's nearby farm, and we were going to go riding with my grandmother and my mom. My dad called out to me and said, wait, I have your crop, and I was a little bit confused because we were only going on a trail ride and I wouldn't normally bring a crop with me for that. But when I turned around, he was holding out his Rex Lieutenant's crop with the purple, green, and gold ribbons on it. And then I was even more confused because I was like, why is that up here from New Orleans? But when I got closer, I saw that there was a little gold crown tied to it. I was so shocked and surprised and my dad was staring at me. And he's like, do you know what this means? You're gonna be queen of carnival. And so that was just so exciting and I was so surprised and it was a great day. Coincidentally, this year's Rex Parade theme focused on the Palio de Siena a famed horse race in Italy. I couldn't believe it just because of how connected I have been with horses my whole life and enjoyed attending horse races. There is a cherished Mardi Gras Day memory. I always spent it with my mom and my brothers. We would go to the parade route with our family, friends, and wait for my dad to come by on his horse. Early Mardi Gras memories also include a favorite costume. The costume that stands out to me most would be when I dressed up as a princess. It was a dress that I had gotten for Halloween and worn it, and it was this blue sort of velvety dress with a tiara, and then I loved it so much that I brought it back out for Mardi Gras a few months later to continue wearing it and showing it off. As it turned out, dressing up as a princess was a foreshadowing of a long-held wish to be queen of Rex. I would say I definitely dreamed of it. It's something, it's sort of like a Disney princess, something you would always want to be. But I never, it's something I would never expect, and so I still was so surprised and shocked and honored when I found out that I would be reigning on Mardi Gras Day. Family members have served in previous Rex courts. My younger brother was a page in Rex a few years ago, and then my older brother was a Duke last year, and my dad has been a lieutenant for many years. I've gotten to see the rest of my family participate in the ball, and I'm excited to get to do that now. Miss Gamilla has been an active volunteer while attending college. I was really excited when I was given the opportunity to work with the visa program at UVA. I think it's so important for everyone in the community to feel comfortable and confident in their communication skills. And so being able to work with people and see their growth and um, confidence in the English language has been really special to me. She also had an enjoyable local educational opportunity. Interning for the Saints was such a unique and special experience to me because they were such a huge part of my childhood and they've given so much to the city of New Orleans. I worked for them in their data analytics division. So I got to serve the marketing and the corporate partnerships and ticketing departments. So you really got to see the whole business from all the different perspectives. And it was also cool because everyone was just so excited to be there and supporting the teams. The Queen of Carnival grew up watching the WYES broadcast of the Rex Ball and the meeting of the courts of Rex and Comus. I was always a little bit jealous that I didn't get to go, but I love to get to see my parents on TV and find my dad in the crowd even though he was fully covered in his lieutenant's costume. This year, it's Miss Camilla's turn. As a child, she played princess. As an adult, she has become the queen of carnival. And now over to Errol. We're at the uh, cultural epicenter right here of the Italian culture in New Orleans. With me is the guy who, who uh, personifies the this is Frank Maselli. And uh, he's the head of the Italian or the American Italian Renaissance Foundation. He's also the Italian government's honorary counsel to New Orleans. And Frank, I'm going to let you introduce our guest here. Well, thank you, Errol. This is my very good friend from San Sepulcro, Italy, Giuseppe Del Barna. 
He is the president of the Gruppo Spandiratori di San Sepolcro. <laughs> Okay, and now, and I'll let you said that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And Giuseppe, why don't you tell him a quick, uh, give a quick description of what we're doing here? Well, we've been invited, thanks to the American Italian Center, Cultural Center, to take a part to the Mardi Gras. We kind of uh, used to come to New Orleans for the event of the Italian society, the Italian heritage. And uh, this time has been thrilled because we experienced the, the wonderful atmosphere of uh, the Mardi Gras in New Orleans. Now, what is the origin of the flag throwing custom? The origin of the flag throwing is a Renaissance tradition that used to be kind of uh, entertainment during the palio and crossbow competition, which were very, very popular in Tuscany during the that, that time. And the flag wavers performing during the time, during the competition. Now, that must be a lot of skill. Is there a lot of, do they sort of like young boys and practicing and, and Yes, and learn it's, how to it's, do an, it? it's an art that belongs to the young people, mostly to the young people. And they practice three times a week, all year long. And also, we have some practice because we perform a lot all around the world. So we're, we are on skill all the time. The troupe has 80 members, and different men, different people travel to different locations to perform. And I think Giuseppe told me they have to practice for two years before they can perform in public. Yes, yes. We, we, we have a program with the children on the middle school. They start into taking confidence with the, with the flags and drums and drums. And after two years, when they are ready, they get into the show, into the performance. I'd like to ask both of you about the Palio. Um, it sounds like it's a wonderful event. With the, uh, uh, the, you have two races a year, and a lot of excitement. Yes, the, the, the Palio di Siena is something very, very important in Tuscany. Everybody get respect on the, uh, of the Palio because it's the oldest Renaissance and medieval tradition in Tuscany, and they, they perform twice a year during the summertime, and this competition doesn't belong to anywhere just in Siena, because they are very jealous about their tradition, and nobody can say, I'm from Siena if you're not, because it's going to yeah, be there's, dangerous. There's one race in July and one in August, August yes. and uh, the race, they prepare all year round, and the races, the both races last 90 seconds each. Now, do they look, do, do, do they place bets here like they do in the in racetracks? Uh, no, I mean, no, we, we are, uh, we are here it's, representing our town. No, in the Palio. Oh, the oh. Bet, they said, do they bet on the, the Oh, races? I'm sorry. I know, well, maybe behind the, maybe behind, the behind, behind, behind the scene, scene yes. I'm sorry. Uh, yes, but one thing is very important about the Palio. You should know that the Contrade, they leave 30, 365 days a year, and they're not just thinking about the horse competition. They're thinking also to help family who needs help, help children in school, in everything. It's, it's a kind of complicated to understand, you know, in this modern life, but they are really very, very tied up all year long. Well, you know, I don't know if people remember, but we've been bringing them here for about 40 years, including back in the, in the World's Fair. They used to come, they came four or five times for two weeks at a time, so. Well, thank you for coming this time. Come back again. Oh, we hope Thank so. you for having us. We're looking us. forward to it. Let's okay. go back. Thank Let's you. Let's go back to Peg. Peg? All right. Thanks, E. And, you know, for such an historic event, it is only fitting that we include a few historical questions to test your knowledge of carnival history. We'll have three questions during tonight's broadcast with some wonderful prizes for viewers who submit all three correct answers. Here's the first question. And now, our first carnival quiz question. Name three signature floats, the ones you see every year, that roll in the Rex Parade. Our prizes. A two-night stay for two at the Four Seasons Hotel New Orleans on Canal Street. 
Your visit includes daily breakfast for two and is valued at $1,500. Valid March 1st, 2023 until March 1st, 2024. Donated by the Four Seasons Hotel New Orleans. Two winners will receive a pair of tickets to View Orleans, the interactive cultural experience located atop the Four Seasons Hotel and featuring 360 degree indoor and outdoor observation decks donated by View Orleans. A hand painted glass buff gras ornament designed exclusively for Adlers and donated by Adlers. A king cake necklace and pin donated by the historic New Orleans collection. A copy of the book, Rex, 150 Years of the School of Design by Dr. Stephen Hales, published by Arthur Hardy Enterprises and donated by the School of Design. A copy of the 2023 Rex Proclamation by artist Henry Caselli, donated by the Rex Organization. A copy of the 2023 Rex Parade Bulletin with illustrations by Caroline Thomas, also donated by the Rex Organization. A copy of the book Mardi Gras Chronicles of the New Orleans Carnival by Errol Laborde, published by Pelican Publishing. A copy of the book New Orleans Mardi Gras Moments by photographer Judy Batoni and me, Peggy Scott Laborde, and published by Pelican and a DVD of this broadcast. We'll tell you where to send your answers later in our program. And now it's time to thank those who made tonight's broadcast possible. Funding for the Rex Ball and the meeting of the courts of Rex and Comus is made possible through generous community support. There's no place like New Orleans at Mardi Gras. At First Horizon, we are excited to keep finding ways to support the city. This uniquely New Orleans celebration and special broadcasts on WYES-TV that capture the heart of our city. Mr. and Mrs. Michael Bright White are proud to support WYES and this broadcast of the Rex Bowl and wishes everyone a happy Mardi Gras. Hail Rex! CapTrust, Bespoke High Net Worth, Family Office, and Institutional Investment Services. More information is at captrust.com. Dreams. Dreams keep us growing. Dreams keep us thriving. Dreams keep us believing in the power of teamwork. Hancock Whitney, your dream, our mission. The Rink, a unique collection of shops and select offices located in the heart of the Garden District. Ample parking available. The Rink, a historic space with a modern vision. Hello, I'm Emmett Dupas, lead partner at Bienville Capital Group, where we specialize in finding solutions to help companies and their employees reach their financial goals. Dawn Services would like to hail Rex and is proud to support this special program. Premium Parking has a space for you. Easy and convenient parking all across the city. Find more information on the app or at premiumparking.com. Fidelity Bank celebrating 115 years of service. Hail Rex, hail Comas, happy Mardi Gras. Also brought to you by Arthur J. Gallagher Risk Management Services. Any challenge, any risk, anywhere in the world. Home Care Solutions, compassionate in-home elder care to extend your loved one's independence. The Conwell Family Foundation and Felix's Restaurant and Oyster Bar, where oyster lovers can belly up to the bar. Additional funding provided by Jonathan C. McCall and the Galatoire Foundation. by the Marine Forces Reserve Band. But, Will, we've got a lot of show and tell. Well, let's talk about the show and tell. Let's look at the, the doubloons and the throws and everything that we've got for Rex this year. This is our standard doubloon that we throw every year. This one's uh, unanodized silver, uh, given out by the gold um, Rex lieutenants. And, of course, with the theme Palio de Siena on the flip side. 
And of course, moving on, we've got more things. There you go. And then the we've gold. got the yes. gold balloons. In fact, this year, each lieutenant gets the color of their uh, um, of their uniform in their doubloon. Green oh. lieutenants throw green doubloons. Purple lieutenants throw purple doubloons. And of course, we've got the uh, the gold lieutenants that throw the gold doubloons and the silver doubloons this year. Okay. And in addition, this is brand new and really interesting. It's going to be a, a keepsake. It's a captain's doubloon. The captain is the only person that will be throwing this uh, and that did throw it today and in the future. The captain in the Rex organization goes by the name Bathurst, Lord High Chamberlain. It's part of our old just tradition of, of uh, a fancy, uh, fanciful royalty. Mm -hmm. And so this is new this year and a great addition to our throws. All right. And uh, moving on to some other items, uh, the uh, King's Pin and the Ducals, uh, we have those to show as well. And uh, those are really quite a tradition uh, for the Rex Ball, the beautiful uh, ducals, which date back to the 19th century, the, the feeling of that. And, and, um, and earlier, though, we might, was, must also mention these Rex theme throws. We'd shown you a few earlier, but these are kind of animated. Look how much fun they are. But they, each one was tied to a specific float. So Rex has gotten very fancy, and we said the animals were represented on the floats themselves today. And the Keepsake Cup. This is our green initiative. They're purple, green, and gold, but it's our green initiative because these don't clog up storm drains like a lot of the uh, other Mardi Gras throws do. Uh, they're keepsakes. If you get one, like a Zulu coconut, you want to bring it home. This is a really great thing um, uh, you know, to add into to the Rex throws. Yeah. And? and then, of course, we still do have the plastic cups that everybody loves and keeps in the house throughout the year with the theme Palio de Siena uh, on this year's plastic cup. Yes. So, so much to show, and here we go with All the right. Ducal. So this is interesting. Uh, so this is our Ducal. Uh, the, the men of the organization wear the one on the left. The ladies wear the one on the right. Two years ago, we had a very similar Ducal. It was green instead of purple, uh, and the horse was facing the other direction uh, because we were intended to use the theme Palio de Siena in 2021, but it got canceled due to COVID. So this year's Ducal is very similar. And as we said, the, yeah, the men's Ducal was off to the uh, to the left, and this special king's pin. The king King's pin, the king does this every year, and he designs it himself, and he uses symbolism that's meaningful to him. So this is an Edelweiss flower in the center, which is native to the Dolomites, uh, in, uh, which is you know a very important place in his lifetime. And then it's surrounded by a gear. Now, he's a big cyclist, but he also says that the gear represents the evolution of, of humanity and the progress uh, created by um, uh, by uh, machines and and, uh, and gears. And we also I want to point out what you're hearing. You're, you are hearing the Jimmy Maxwell Orchestra. Jimmy and his orchestra, and they also play. The, here we go. You can actually see Jimmy conducting. He's been doing this for almost 40 years. He um, actually was a, uh, his mentor was Rene Luop, who used to do it for many, many years as well. Uh, but his son Robert, his son Robert will be uh, over on the other side, on the common side, doing uh, doing the ball as well. But we're so excited that Jimmy, Jimmy does over 200 engagements a year, and he has actually performed for many years with a late relationship with Peter Duchin, who was another society band leader. But we're so excited that Jimmy, uh, Jimmy Duchin, Jimmy Maxwell is back. And the music just sounds great, doesn't and, and, and throughout the night, there are several marches you can hear, like two or three of them in particular. They're, they're great at it. They were rehearsing it before. They're doing the President's March. It's so good to hear that big, bold sound. Yeah, it, it's a very, very full sound. And, uh, you know, I think so many people going to balls over the years have grown up with the Jimmy Maxwell Orchestra. And he gives this credit, by the way, for his success back to his dad, who was Ed Maxwell, who performed in Rene Luop's band. And he was involved with a lot of different musical activities, but both his dad, Ed, and Jimmy, and Robert, to you, his son, who you see over the common side, are all drummers. They all have the drumming tradition. Isn't that great? You know, <laughs> loving that, too. Um, well, I know tonight you see a lot of familiar faces, don't you? You do, um, and you do. This organization is made up of generations of family members that go all the way back to the very early days. And so this is sort of that time where you get to see the people that maybe you don't see year round. And so we see them tonight. We're happy that everybody's here and, and this will be a fun night. And when, you know, we'll of course see the members presentation, them taking a bow before the Rex throne. That is, I think, one of the most fun parts where we can see who, who who's there. 
who's there. <laughs> Absolutely. But it means a lot, Air, uh, just to, to be in this confines. We miss the auditorium, we should say that. But being at the Sheraton, I think they've done a great job, don't you? Sheraton's done a good job. I mean, the, uh, the auditorium was designed for carnival bars. And as far as like the view, it had the balcony where you can see, where you can see it had a wider floor. But this hotel has done a good job. And a lot of the crews kind of like the idea of having bars and restaurants. And if you want to stay overnight, just take an elevator instead of leaving. And so there's a lot that the hotel has to offer if you have the right space. Including the Queen's Supper, too, uh, being held. Which is nice that it could be here in the hotel so that you really just have to leave the ballroom and you're there in the party you know, till the wee hours of the morning. Very convenient. And we just heard the golden tones of Mark Romig, our MC for tonight during the ball. There is Mark. And um, he has been doing this for many, many years. And he will be guiding us through the presentations and the announcements. But they're about to clear the floor. Mark is the best MC in town, and he's even the voice of the New Orleans Saints in the Super Bowl. Yes, yes, you, absolutely. You have heard his voice before, <laughs> not just at the Rex Ball in the meeting of the court. Can I point out something about the Marine Band? Because we're going to hear that in a few minutes. Yeah. Well, let's just tease something. Every year we listen to the Marine Band, and we hear it. It's wonderful, those really military service anthems. There's a new anthem in the mix this year. Okay. Uh, I, I guess that most of you haven't heard before. I'm not going to tell you what it is, okay? Uh, uh -huh. I, I just want you to know, but, but look for the new anthem or listen for the new anthem. Well, we're very excited. Also, we're looking forward to hearing from the trumpeters, the, the official Rex trumpeters, and that's Dr. Todd Engelhart and Barney Floyd, and you'll see them coming up uh, soon as well. But uh, that Marine Band, they perform uh, throughout the year in New Orleans. One of my favorites is the concert, the July 3rd concert, the Marine Forces Reserve Band, and they also do Toys for Tots. The list is long. They're actually going to be going to the Houston Rodeo next week, so they'll be leaving town and, and doing that as well. Um, they've had a very busy, busy season, though, marching in a lot of the, of the local parades. So you, once again, you're starting to see the floor. And note the crown, right? Well, look, Bo look at Boston that beautiful. Boston Awning uh, has been doing the floor for a number of years, and this is a, it's a brand new floor every year with the Rex crown in the middle. Uh, and what I think is really great about this tradition is at the end of, uh, of Mardi Gras, they pull it up and they cut it into pieces and they donate it to, uh, to schools and art programs to be used uh, Talk as Talk about campuses. being green. <laughs> and it's really. a family-owned business. It's now owned by the Helmkees. And uh, we have, of course, seen them put together the preparations for, you know, tonight. And to see these gentlemen rolling on the floor and, and making of this camp is very, very tight. It is quite a sight. It really is. And, and to see them prepare it and fold it in the shop to then bring to the uh, to the hotel is just an, an unbelievable process that they go through. And it's a huge floor, and they fold it up beautifully and transport it over. This is hard to get everybody off that dance floor. They want to visit, don't they? Well, I mean, this this is the time. Everybody's celebrating, <laughs> celebrating uh, the king of carnival, the queen of carnival, all the maids in the court. Yeah. So uh, uh, people are happy tonight, and it's the last day of a very long Mardi Gras, and uh, they're going to get every last little bit out of their system. Well, e, we're, we were outside for a few minutes today in between doing our homework for tonight, and it seemed like there was a lot of pent-up energy. Oh, yeah. It was, uh, the spirit was back. Uh, we walked together into the court. I always love to see the Society of St. Anne. To see, it's got to be a thousand people, okay, who walk across from Marigny, they go to Frenchman Street, then they walk down uh, uh, Royal Street, and it is so uplifting to see. This is genuine masquerading. This is the real thing. And they got bands and all that, and it's just really good. The only problem is sometimes they're so thick you can't get through, but it's really good. And now there are spin off groups that do this. And so when people say, well, there's not as much masking as there used to be, go to the French Quarter and go like the, uh, along Royal Street and, and, and Charter Street, and you see a lot of masking. And there was a lot of it today. I, I didn't see as much satire on the street, though. I was a little bit surprised at that. I think there was more beauty in the costume. Well, in some know. places it was so crowded, if there was satire, you might not have even seen it was in there. <laughs> but it's just a good, it just felt good to see that after two years that that, oh, that yeah. spirit's still there. And boy, it sure is. Now, you rode a horse today. I, I did. And, and as I was riding, I did see some satire on you the did? streets. And okay. my favorite costume that I saw was the Chinese spy balloon. You did. And there were several of them, different <laughs> takes on it. But, but what, a, what a great, you know, new, you know, interesting costume to pull out, <laughs> special for this year. It really, really well done. I do have one little bit of a, a scoop about the queen. 
that when the Queen was being brought down in the, the Royal Limousine, had a flat tire. Oh, no! And so they had to bring in the family vehicle, of oh. all things, um, oh. uh, to drive the Queen in. So. Oh, that's a big So oops. even Queens sometimes, yes, okay, sometimes. have to deal with these everyday life problems. <laughs> yes. Well, w there's so much to be looking forward to. Um, the lieutenants, the sight of the purple, green, and gold lieutenants really add a lot of pomp to this as well. Yeah, it really does. And, uh, and you're right, I did ride on a horse today as a lieutenant of the organization next to, uh, next to my fellow lieutenants. And it was a beautiful day. Lots of people came out because the weather was good. But when you're draped in velvet with a velvet cloak on top of a horse, yeah. it, it's a little, a little warm. So, a little uh, warm. <laughs> the people who, who ride horses tell me it's a lot of fun because you're close to the people. That, that's so true. As I mean, opposed you, to being on the float, you, you're right you can there. You really have conversations with, with the people in the crowd, and you do every time, every time you stop. And that really is part of the fun of it. Mm -hmm. And, of course, the traditional toast to 25-25 St. Charles. Was the, um, so much meeting to, to that, that building, uh, with, including former Rexes. That was my saving grace today, and I say that meaning every word of it. So my fellow lieutenants were two Graces, Liam Grace and Robert Grace. And they were able to call ahead to the Grace House at 2525 and prepare some cold drinks and some, some hamburgers to be brought out to us as we passed by. So we didn't even have to dismount off of the horses. We had refreshments come right to us. Sheridan Grace uh, uh, brought them out to us. And that really saved us because it was a, it was and a tough ride, long, hot. On that, behalf that of the Commander of Marine Forces Once Reserve, again, Mark Roman, Lieutenant General David G. Bellin. The Marine Forces Reserve Band is proud at the 151st Rex Reception Ball. The Rex organization is honored to salute the men and women of the United States Armed Forces, particularly those serving in combat zones around the world. This evening, we are honored by the presence of Marine Forces Reserve Band, led on the march by Staff Sergeant Joshua Wagner from Crete, Illinois. Comprised of 51 active duty men and women, each member of the Marine Forces Reserve Band is a graduate of Marine Corps recruit training and Marine combat training. Several Marines have served as drill instructors, recruiters, or Marine security guards, and several, including Chief Warrant Officer 2 Talbot and Master Sergeant Hauser, are veterans of Operations Iraqi and Enduring Freedom. These Marines train annually in marksmanship, physical fitness evaluations, and martial arts training. The Marine Forces Reserve Band perform over 300 concerts and ceremonies every year in support of both military and civilian functions. All Marines have to learn to handle a rifle, mm -hmm. even if you're in the band or if you're or, or the behind type rider. They all handle rifles. Mm -hmm. And we should point out that the draping of the throne itself, uh, that has all been newly refurbished uh, last year. It's a t totally new look on the canopy itself. Very beautifully done by Mardi Gras Productions. We were talking to Blaine Kern earlier. He's really proud of that. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Marine Forces Reserve Band, led on the march by Staff Sergeant Joshua Wagner from Crete, Illinois. Now taking his position is the officer in charge, Chief Warrant Officer 2, Steve Talbot, from Long Island, New York. <laughs>
piece was originally written as a tribute to Tuscany, where the annual Palio horse race, of course, is held. The next Dixieland classic <laughs> is a perfect characterization of the familiar phrase, laissez la bon temps brûler, let the good times roll. Please enjoy as the Marine Forces Reserve Band performs Bourbon Street Parade. Featured solo artists are Staff Sergeant Lucy Warmbrot from Dunkirk, New York, on tenor saxophone, and Sergeant Raymond Fuller from Falmouth, Massachusetts, on trumpet. <laughs> that evokes the desire to express oneself and move to the melodies. It is the band's pleasure to perform these classics for the people of New Orleans and distinguished organizations such as the Rex organization that continually strive to spur on the legacy of the city and uphold its traditions. Ladies and gentlemen, when the saints go marching in,
Lucy Wombrod from Dunkirk, New York, and it's her third year performing in the Rex Ball and leading the band. Great wow, stuff. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> People may be in their, their seats still on the floor, but they're dancing All backstage. Present, please rise for the presentation of colors and the playing of our national anthem, the Star Spangled Banner. is the Armed Forces Bentley. If you or a family member have served or is currently serving, we ask that you please stand and be recognized when your service song is played.
This song actually debuted in 2022. It's called Semper Supra, meaning always above. And it was composed by James Tishner and Sean Nelson, who uh, both hail from the Air Force. some entertainment and the Marine Forces Reserve Band has been the Rex Entertainment for years. And to hear the Space Force, that, that's a new one on us, isn't it? Yeah. Well, we teased about the new servers and it was the Space Force that you heard at the end, which was only started a few years ago. So I don't think anybody has stood up. I don't think there's any veterans of the Space Force yet, but maybe in a few years we'll see that. Maybe nobody in the Space Force yet, but we always talk about Rex's relationship with the military and how that dates back to the very earliest days of the organization. I think you really see that played out here when members stand up as their anthems are played. And so now... Many. You know, the very first Rex parade had the Army Band in it. <laughs> it's always go. been a part of Rex. And that was an important sign just now, the whistle, meaning the beginning of the Rex Ball. Now we'll see the Royal Heralders. Yes, and um, I look forward to introducing you to them. And the Rex lieutenants in their purple, gold, and green. And to the left is Barney Floyd, and to the right, Dr. Todd Engelhardt. It's great to see them. And um, Dr. Engelhardt is a thoracic and cardiac act surgeon <laughs> at East Jefferson Hospital by day. <laughs> and Barney Floyd is a five-time Grammy nominee and winner. And he also plays regularly at the Commander's Palace Brunch on Sundays. <laughs> This is the moment we've been waiting for. As Rex 2023, Ludovico Fioli and his beautiful queen, Abby Gamilla, enter the stage. And here they are, led by the organization's president on the left, Christy Brown. And just a reminder that tonight you will see Rex and his queen in gold and later, uh, later on in color. The man on the left is uh, Christy Brown, who is a, uh, uh, a former Rex, and he's the, uh, the president of the School of Design, which is the parent organization of Rex. And on the right is James Reese, who was Rex 2022. <laughs> I was so glad he could share uh, his memories with us. And Mr. Fioli's civic leadership is just so extensive. We, we did talk about that earlier. Uh, the list is so very long and his family's dedication uh, to the community. Uh, and, and Ms. Camilla, what a beautiful young lady. Uh, was very, very active in volunteerism in her school and uh, 
graduated summa cum laude from Groton. Uh, she is working very hard uh, in her in her schoolwork. Very very serious about all that, which we appreciate. You talk about uh, James Reese. He's been in the news a lot too because he's also a co-chair of the Mardi Gras advisory committee. And there's been all kinds of issues the last couple of years with the Chardon parade route and getting uh, more police on the force. So he. He's been very involved with that. And Miss Gambella's family has very strong Rex ties. Her father is one of the longest serving lieutenants, and her brother, Moylan Field Gamilla III, served as a Duke in the Rex Court in 2022, and her brother, Frank Hampton Gamilla, served as a page in the Rex Court of 2015. Let's talk about Rex for one second. This is interesting. He's only the third foreign born Rex in the history of the organization, 151 years. The only other two were Matthew J. Sanders in 1902 and Charles E. Fenner in 1939. So it's very unusual to have a foreign-born Rex like we do this year. He said something very beautiful at the Meet the King party the other day. He said that he adopted New Orleans as his new home 20 years ago. And now with Mardi Gras 2023, New Orleans has adopted him right back. Oh, beautifully put. So beautifully put. In data analytics, I believe it was. I mean, <laughs> yeah. she, is, she is brilliant, by the way. We talked about um, her intelligence before. Her brothers tell me that she has a photographic memory, which I think they think is a little bit unfair uh, <laughs> you know, within the family. She gets all the good grades. Um, we have a um, an equestrian theme this year with the Paleo de Siena. She is a big equestrian. She loves horses. Her tradition in Mardi Gras was always to have her dad dismount off of his lieutenant's horse and take a picture with her. It's just uh, something very special in her life, her relationship with uh, uh, with horses. And so just a perfect theme for her for this year. Yes. Couldn't have worked out any better. And a little later, you will uh, meet their assistants, if you will, the, uh, the pages. Each monarch has their own page, and we'll be introducing to, uh, you to them shortly. But it is so nice to see them up on the throne and at this carnival in particular, 2023. We've been through a lot, haven't we? <laughs> We've been through a lot and now things are finally back to normal. Ooh. In fact, you were just talking about the pages. Last year, you might recall, there were four pages, not two, because the pages who lost out in 2021 because Mardi Gras was canceled were able to come in in 2022 and participate. Two as King's pages and two as Queen's pages. But we're back to normal this year. Everything is back to normal and wonderful. And you're about to meet the, the court itself. They are um, going to be inviting them in. Made of the court, Miss Eugenie Louise Phillipson. And here she comes. And she is the daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Randolph Arthur Phillipson. She is a senior at Tulane University and majoring in communications and public relations. And during her freshman year at the College of Charleston, she actually uh, was very involved as a coxswain of the women and men and women's rowing team. And she is accompanied by a Duke. Is, Mr. Jacques Pichot Renoir, son of Mr. and Mrs. Vance Greenslip Renoir and the late Vance Greenslip Renoir. His mother is a former Pamela Gay Pichot of Bill Flat, the graduate of Isidore Newman School, where he received the head of school award. Uh, Mr. Renoir graduated from the University of Chicago, where he majored in economics and minored in history and made the dean's list. And accompanying them, we see King Milling and Jack Laborde, former Rexes themselves. 
Miss Phillipson was the Tulane fan ambassador uh, for the football team this year, a football team that went on to win the Cotton Bowl in the best four minutes of college football <laughs> ever. She had a lot of responsibility in that role, and she did it well doing all the social media posts and creating the fat heads and building excitement around the team <laughs> in this wonderful year. So very special year for, for Miss Phillips. And the next is up is been... Miss Eugenie uh, McLeod Gigi, and she is the daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Evans McLeod. She's a fourth year senior at the University of Virginia, majoring in media studies, and she's made the dean list. And her mom was presented at the Rex Ball in son of Mr. and Mrs. Patrick Calhoun. His mother is the former Julie Catherine Favre of New Orleans. Mr. Calhoun is a graduate of Jesuit High School where he played rugby. He recently graduated from LSU where he majored in economics, made the dean's list, and was a member and officer in the Kappa Sigma fraternity. He currently attends LSU Law School. And we see Dr. Stephen Hales and Mike Kearney escorting them, both former Rexes. Next up is Miss Eliza Hollis Nesit, and she is the daughter of Mr. and Mrs. John Kearney Nesit. She's a senior at Wake Forest University, double majoring in mathematics and history, and her mother was a maid in the Rex Court in 1992. She's being escorted by Mr. Patrick Hennigan Sylvia, son of Dr. and Mrs. Charles Paul Sylvia Jr. His mother is the former Molly Heidensvelter of New Orleans. Mr. Sylvia is a graduate of Newman School, where he was a member of the baseball team. Uh, he's graduated recently from the University of Mississippi, where he majored in business and real estate, and he currently works in the real estate uh, industry in Atlanta, Georgia. And we should point out that Ms. Nisa's interests include painting, tennis, and fantasy football. Interesting. <laughs> and she hopes to pursue her career in business and business operata, uh, operational analytics. They're being escorted by Robert Bow and Hardy Fowler, both former Rexes which is typical, but not always escorted by former Rexes, but usually. And next up is Ms. Lily Nolan Grant. She's the daughter of Dr. and Mrs. Arthur Gordon Grant III, and she is a senior at the University of Colorado at Boulder, where she's majoring in psychology. She's made the dean's list, and her mother was a maid in the Rex court in 1993. Her father was a uh, Rex lieutenant, Jimmy Roddy. Uh, and by the way, I went to school with her mother in high school, and she reminds me so much of her back then. <laughs> She's being escorted by Mr. Lawrence Noel Johnson III. Mr. Johnson is a graduate of Christ School in Arden, North Carolina, where he was the recipient of the Courage Award. He's currently a junior at LSU, majoring in sports management. Uh, Mr. Johnson was a page in the 2013 Rex Court, and his great, 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 great grandfather, Albert Baldwin, was king of Carnival in 1876. Wow. Being escorted by uh, Ron French, former Rex, and Who is that? Michael Milling. <laughs> Ron French, dad. Your dad. <laughs> and Michael Milling, not a former Rex. Uh, and not coming, yet. Not yet. Not yet. Coming up next, Miss Elizabeth Ann Charbonnet. Elizabeth Ann, she's the daughter of Mr. and Mrs. John Denisho Charbonnet, Jr. She's a senior at the University of Mississippi, majoring in hospitality management. And her dad was a Duke in the Rex Court in 1998, and her grandfather, John Denisho Charbonnet, reigned as King of Carnival in 1988. He, she's being escorted by Mr. Lawrence Waite Freeman, son of Mr. and Mrs. Peter Lawrence Freeman. His mother is a former Catherine Tyson Gornto of Wilmington, North Carolina. Mr. Freeman is a graduate of Christ School in Arden, North Carolina, and he attended Clemson University, where he studied business. He's currently working on his pilot's license with a goal of pursuing a career in aviation. Mr. Freeman's father was a Duke in the Rex Court of 1989. His grandfather, Louis McDaniel Freeman, reigned as King of Carnival in 1999, and there are lots of additional Freemans who have been Kings of Carnival or Queens of Carnival in the past. And their escorts, Will? Uh, that is uh, Story Charbonnet, uh, Rex 2020, and Jack Charbonnet, Story's brother. All right. And next up is Miss A. Green Barus, and she is the daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Gerald Walter Barus. She'll be coming up shortly. And she is a junior at the University of Alabama, majoring in interior design. And her father was a Duke in the Rex Court of 1980, and her sister, Lauren Louise Barus and Jean Rene Barus, were maids in the courts of 2009 and 2011. 
sported by Mr. Joseph Story Charbonnet Jr., who's the son of Mr. and Mrs. Joseph Story Charbonnet. His mother's a former Ann Lynn Davis of Greenville, North Carolina. He's a graduate of Newman School, where he was a captain of the varsity football and baseball teams. He recently graduated from the University of Mississippi, where he majored in business finance and was a provost school, uh, scholar. Uh, his father, uh, Story, as we just saw, was Rex in 2020. And their escorts? Being escorted by Lewis Freeman and Perry Eastman. All right. And if ever I cease to love, we're hearing hot air, one of the anthems of Carnival. We'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that in just a moment. But next up, Margaret Ellis, Epting Goff, Margaret Ellis. She is the daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Stacy Wayne Goff. And she is a senior at the University of Mississippi, majoring in integrated marketing. And she's on the Chancellor's Honor Roll. And she, uh, her plans include working with an organization focused on children's advocacy with special needs children. Being escorted by Mr. Jack Newton Reynolds, who's the son of Mr. and Mrs. Stephen Brett Reynolds. His mother is the former Sally Carl Reynolds of Birmingham, Alabama. He's a graduate of Isidore Newman School, where he was a cum laude graduate, participated on the football and track and field teams. He recently graduated from Boston University, where he majored in engineering. He was a cum laude graduate with a specialization in mechanical engineering aerospace. Smart fellow there. He currently lives and works in Washington, D.C., being escorted by Bill Grace and Dugan Westfeld. Both former Both Rexes. former captains, in fact. Uh, yeah, that, too, of course. And next up, Miss Caroline Myra Marie Conwell. She is the daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Daniel Osa Conwell IV. She is a senior at the University of California in Los Angeles, UCLA, majoring in art history. And her sister, Marsha Madeline Conwell, was a maid in the Rex Court in 2017. And another sister, Catherine, was uh, presented at the ball in 2015. And another sister was presented at the ball in 2018. Being escorted by Mr. John Minor Wisdom II, who's the son of Mr. and Mrs. Andrew Bell Wisdom. His mother's a former Maria Corin Bonas of Essex Junction, Vermont. Mr. Wisdom is a graduate of Metairie Park Country Day School, where he was a national merit semifinalist. He recently graduated from Dartmouth College, where he majored in history, specializing in early modern European revolutions. His namesake, Judge John Minor Wisdom, was an integral um, uh, participant in desegregating the South in the 1960s. They're being escorted by Sandy Villery and Poco Sloss. Our, our maids of the Rex Court of 2023, and now we are awaiting the debutantes who are about to be presented. And notice that they have a lovely blue sash with a pin. We'll give you a close-up look on. Okay. Dating back to the European Renaissance period, when conflicts between city-states oh, were is frequent, the new entertainment standard piece. bearers with their flags yes. accompanied by We've blades never done this before. preceded <laughs> the other armed men. Theme. Founded 70 we years ago in the same Tuscan the region ball. as Siena, Gruppo Spandiratori di San Sepulcro revived the ancient tradition of flag waving. This world-renowned group has had the honor of performing its art on all seven continents and before many world leaders. This is going to be a treat for <laughs> all in attendance and all watching. And they've marched in four different parades. They've been busy already. probably catching the audience by surprise here. They, they're <laughs> expecting the standard run of show, and we've just thrown in something completely new and fun and interesting. I think they're going to love it.
and Sansa Poco is only about 90 minutes, away, 90 miles away from Siena. <laughs> significance to this as well. The flag wavers are important uh, in the old medieval Italian uh, military because the throwing of the flag was meant to signal from one portion of the military of the army to another. So this was not just for show, this was very much functional from a military perspective. Italian influences. Uh, many of our float builders came from Via Reggio, Italy. In fact, three generations of them who still are here uh, working within the Rex organization today and who brought the Italian style of float building with them to New Orleans. Including uh, the Bertolucci family, Jonathan Bertolucci and his father.
young person sport. <laughs> it takes a lot of energy, doesn't it? signals many of them have had blades attached to them and were used in actual fighting which is being demonstrated here to New Orleans. This is the, the best exposure they've ever had. This is, uh, th th this is great for people to see this.
ball one for the ages. Nobody will ever forget the year that the Italian flag wavers, nope. flag throwers came to the ball. What a special presentation. Special thanks to Frank Maselli as well. Yeah. He really helped to make this possible. Frank works closely with the flag wavers as has coordinated their, uh, their performances dozens if not hundreds of times. So nice to be able to bring this to our audience and to our viewers. You know, the Italian influence really is everywhere this year, right down to our proclamation, uh, which was created by Italian-American artist Henry Caselli, and pays homage beautifully to the Paleo di Siena and the banners that are incorporated with the horse race. Well, I want to mention something. You, uh, you talked a while ago about... Send greetings I'll get back to this. ...to the Honorable Moro Lorenzini, Council General of the Republic of Italy, who will accept Rex's organization's royal decoration on behalf of Her Excellency Marangela Zappia, Ambassador of Italy to the United States of America. While Ambassador Zappia enjoined the King and Queen of Carnival for royal toast yesterday and today, her diplomatic duties have carried her away from Rex's capital city. Ambassador Zappia regrets her absence and requests Consul General Lorenzini Please be recognized to receive the Rex Royal Decoration on her behalf. The Rex Organization asks that Council General Lorenzini please receive its Royal Decoration on behalf of Ambassador Zappia. Ambassador Zappia has been here for the last couple of days, paid a very special visit, and participated in a lot of the activities uh, with the Rex organization and with Rex uh, and the Queen of Carnival uh, themselves over the last couple of days. She had to return for diplomatic duty to New York. Uh, this is the first anniversary, approximately, of the war in Ukraine, and there is important work to be done at the United Nations. She very much regrets that she cannot be here tonight. And Council Lorenzini is based in Houston and has um, been involved with the Diplomatic Corps for uh, over 25 years. Very, very experienced. And that's a, tr a tradition at the Rex Ball as well, to provide a, a, an honor, a ducal medal, to a, a, a very important guest, visitor. Most Often of the military. Time it's military, yeah, right. most of the time. Tonight, diplomatic. Diplomatic. Rex wishes to royally welcome a select group of debutantes. And now we now can get on with the yeah. debutante presentations. Looking forward to it. First up is Miss Cecilia Walsh Ballard, and she is the daughter and stepdaughter Ms. of Mr. Cecilia Emilia Walsh Mrs. Ballard. Oh, okay, we'll let, we'll let him say that. Stepdaughter <laughs> and daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Paul Andrew Hogan. And she is the uh, daughter and stepdaughter of Mr. Luis Etienne Ballard. And as you said, stepdaughter and daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Paul Andrew Hogan. She is a senior at LSU majoring in sociology, and she plans on attending law school. And her sister, uh, Catherine, was presented as a Deb in the Rex Court of 2020. And her aunt, Aline Walsh Knowlton, was a maid in the Rex Court of 1993. And she's being escorted by Mr. Paul Andrew Hogan. Miss Esme Boyce Benjamin. Daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Thomas Menti Benjamin. Esme Boyce Benjamin the daughter of uh, Mr. and Mrs. Thomas Menti Benjamin. She's a graduate of Metairie Park Country Day School, where she graduated cum laude, was a French gold medalist, uh, and was a member of the tennis and cross country team. She completed a postgraduate year at Deerfield Academy in Deerfield, Massachusetts. She's currently a junior at Rhodes College, majoring in history and French. She's a member of the varsity tennis team, Pi Delta Phi French Honor Society, and the Tri Delta Sorority. And she's being escorted by her father, Thomas Menti Benjamin. Miss Joan Caroline Benjamin, daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Edward Wisdom Benjamin. Miss Benjamin is a senior at Tulane University, majoring in finance, where she made the dean's list. She is an accomplished equestrian.
Austrian, and her grandmother, Adelaide Wisdom Benjamin, a true civic activist, a wonderful lady, reigned as Queen of Carnival in 1953, and her Aunt Mary Dabney Benjamin Williamson was a maid in the Rex Court of 1982. Being escorted by her father, Ned Benjamin. Miss Kate Virginia Kehoe, daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Charles Vincent Kehoe II. She is a graduate of Benjamin Franklin High School. Uh, she's a senior at the University of Edinburgh in Scotland, majoring in history. She's a member of the Athletics Society, the History Society, and a volunteer at the World War II Museum. Her hobbies and interests include reading, athletics, and painting. Ms. Kehoe's aunt, Deborah Jean Renaudin, was a maid in the Rex Court of 1988, and her cousin, Lane Roth Kehoe, was presented as a debutante of the Rex Court of 2019. She's being escorted by her father, Carl Kehoe. Miss Claire Roth Kehoe, daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Charles Vincent Kehoe II, and escorted by her uncle, Mr. Gerard Roth Kehoe II. Ms. Kehoe is a senior at Texas Christian University, majoring in supply chain management. She is a member of the Neely School of Business Premium Credentials and Mentorship Program. And her aunt, Deborah Jean Renauden, was a maid in the Rex Court of 1988. And her cousin, Lane Roth Kehoe, was presented as a debutante of the Rex Court in 2019. And so these girls are twins, obviously, and so dad couldn't present them both. He just couldn't make the <laughs> turn couldn't. fast enough. And so her uncle stood in for, uh, for the escorting duties. Miss Anastasia Elizabeth Talbot, daughter of the Honorable and Mrs. Michael Kirk Talbot. Miss Talbot is a graduate of St. Martin's Episcopal School, where she was a member of the National Honor Society. She's a senior at St. Edwards University in Austin, Texas, majoring in communications with a minor in graphic design. She's made the Dean's List as a student ambassador, social media director, and is active in Topa Radio, the school radio station, and Cabra, a fashion magazine on campus. Her hobbies and interests include working at the campus radio station, which includes serving as radio host. She plans to continue her studies in London over the summer, and she's being escorted by Ms. Margaret Robert Casey Wilson. Daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Carter Cleveland Wilson Sr. Granddaughter of Mr. and Mrs. Gordon F. Wilson Jr. And Ms. Wilson is a senior at the University of Mississippi, majoring in marketing and advertising. She has also participated in internships in the hospitality and retail sectors and also in childcare. And she's being escorted by her father, Carter Wilson. to point out that the uh, Debs each receive a necklace, which uh, Christy Brown is bestowing to her. With a beautiful pendant created by Adlers, this is the traditional debutante um, pendant, um, which of course has two uh, lovely pearls. like snowflakes. <laughs>
combination of actually some of the pins if they were presented in um, earlier carnival organization balls that the pins that they have accumulated are on the back of their gown. That's a fun tradition. Yeah. Again, so nice to hear Jimmy Maxwell and his orchestra. It is, it's a great orchestra. It's uh, so much experience in carnival music, and we're in the best is still to come. Uh, <laughs> it is the pleasure of the, the Rex orchestra. organization to present to this year's King and Queen the Queen of the Carnival of 1973, Lynn Favreau Nolan. And what a story that Lynn Favreau Nolan has. She is a fun 50-year queen, that's for sure. And of course, Lynn Favreau Nolan was the queen of 12 Night Revelers and Rex in the very same year. Which presented a tricky situation because she was then the 50-year queen for both 12th Night and Rex. <laughs> so she had to come here several weeks ago to be presented in Twelfth Night and then return again for tonight. And she is accompanied by Sandy Villery, who is the ball chairman. Pretty dressed, too. And her father-in-law, um, her late father-in-law, was Ulysse Nolan, who is a former uh, Rex. And sister-in-law uh, was last year's 50-year queen. She recently hosted a lunch at Brennan's uh, for uh, the members of her court, most of whom came. Dukes, maids, even a page came. <laughs> when she was queen in 1973, her dress weighed 23 pounds. And when you add a 75 pound mantle to that, she likes to say that she was literally pulling her weight. <laughs> Her dress tonight was designed by, I believe, her, her great aunt, who designed dresses and was a jeweler back in the 20s and 30s uh, and created a number of dress designs. She chose this one. <laughs> it's a beautiful dress. One of the ball's highlights here. We get to see who's here. <laughs> Now the ball lieutenants will come out and set the ballroom floor for the presentation of the members to the king and queen of carnival. There are three sets of lieutenants costumes. These are the ball lieutenant costumes, which are extra special, extra shiny, extra reflective, and have uh, beautiful gold boots. These are not the ones that were worn on the horses today on the Rex Parade. Those costumes still smell like horses. <laughs> That's a big distinction. <laughs> This grand march and the first dance that follows are reserved exclusively for members of the Rex organization. Now this is fun, right? We get to see who's here. Yeah. At the same time, we have a small monitor and some bright lights, so we can't always see everybody, and they tend we to come and go pretty fast. But let's see who we can spot. The first row is going to be the um, uh, the president of the organization, Christy Brown, and his wife, Kia. Uh, is going to be the wife of the King of Carnival, uh, Stephanie Fioli. On the right. Uh -huh. We have the Reese's in the middle, and we have uh, the parents of the queen on the left. Well, they're shifting around a little bit, but that's Guap me and Fritz. Camilla. <laughs> and then you see behind them, we have uh, Bill and Ann Grace. We have uh, Liz and Poco Sloss. And Hardy Hardy. 
Marty Fowler, a former Marty Fowler, himself. Dugan Westfeld, and Millie. Oh, there comes King Here Millie comes to, uh, to get in on the fun. And then you'll see behind them the 50-year queen, uh, as well as uh, the ball chairman, Sandy Villery, and his wife, Anne. You see, everybody's ready to come out and, and go and pay their respects. That's yeah, we the should Calhouns point out that well. there really isn't much dancing in this ball. It really is a reception. And that's Jeff and Connie Parker as well. We have the Cobbs, Gordo and Holt. We have the Rubions, who were the parents of a page last year. And Katie, a former queen, Katie Rubion. Now we're going to start to see the parents of some of the maids and the uh, and the dukes. We've got uh, some Charbonnets. We've got the Montgomerys in the middle, Sweet Dupuy. Uh, and that's Danny and Mary Claire Conwell on the right. We see Philip Woolen, Philip and Tina. Yeah, and I see uh, Mary see Ellie Lane. We've got the parents of the page on the left. That's Paxton and Kim White. We have last year's queen, uh, Ellie Pito White. We have uh, Virginia White, Wynn White, Evans White. <laughs> Lots of whites on Lots that one. Lots of whites, yes. And I see Laura Clavery and Philip right there. And the I see your mama Clavery. and your dad. <laughs> mom, mom and dad, Ron and Flora French. Ron and Flora French. Mom would not miss the Rex Ball. <laughs> Even last year, when, when her back had gone out, she oh. still made it to the Rex Ball. She was Queen of Carnival in 1959. Four page parents. We've got uh, the Kearneys. We've got um, Peter Kovacs. Is that? The, we've got some Graces. This is a big group here. I believe we've I see got Noel some. Johnson, who is uh, the father, Mr. and Mrs. Johnson. Yeah, we've got some Freemans. And some Schmitz, sorry, they, they cleared too quickly. <laughs> I see some Duncans. And the that looks like Foster yes. Duncan. No, that's Kelly Duncan and Carmen. And Mr. and Mrs. Kaiser, Tally. Elise. Oh, yeah, Elise Kaiser, who for the most part runs this organization. Yes, indeed. She has been the best, essentially the secretary of the Rex organization. You have a question you ask Elise. Yeah. The Williams on the right. And we've got the Burgers on the left. This is the family oh, of the uh, of the them. King of Carnival, the Violis. And then we've got uh, the uh, another yeah. set of Duncans, Foster and Sean that were on the right. We've got Dr. Stephen Hales and, and, and Nancy. And wife Nancy. And I see the Thomases right behind them. Holly and Now, that group is just entirely too large to get. Yes, you agree. See the Thomases? Holly and Bob Thomas. Holly and Bob Thomas. Liam, Thomas. Uh, Grace, and Sheridan Grace, who saved us today with the, um, with the refreshments <laughs> on the parade route. I see JP and Aaron Hemel. I see John Baxter. Will. Uh, and Mrs. Gail Benson. And with Greg Benzel. Greg Benzel. Okay. Will Jacobs and, and Will Ava. Jacobs, yes. And uh, Mike Kearney. Oh, yeah, Susu, Mike and Susu, and Susu Kearney. And John Charbonnet. Chris Susu Cannon. Charbonnet. That's John Charbonnet. Uh, the Gollywasses, Billy and Ann Gollywas. John Rareshad. The Bienvenues. I think all, that was also Charles Surin. The Millings, Michael and Caroline Milling. That's uh, Janet the Howard Howards. and Scott. Yeah, Scott. Downings. The Benjamins. And that's David Schaumburg. 
that's Clay Molly's Kearney. Lots of Kearneys around tonight. <laughs> There's a reason why, though. We'll get to that. <laughs> the Baruses. Adelaide Benjamin. Oh, wow, great, great, great to see Adelaide to be here Benjamin. With her son, Dad, right, escorting her. The Bose. Oh, this is Benjamin. <laughs> is there, Ben and Shane French, Dana Hansel. Has, the women's dresses add so much more. It just adds a lot more to they the stuff. Guys are just in black and white. You know? <laughs> uh, but the women really add a lot to it. Uh -huh. You're right. Very colorful tonight. Here's Jim. Here are two sets of Nisets, Holly and John. Jim, Nisit, and Tori. They have a His name. Majesty Rex. Rex 2023. Like everyone on the left, but I didn't get a good enough in look. The we have the Mills, Millses, um, the McKinnons, the Dondases. We have the, uh, the Ballard, Mrs. Cecilia Ballard. And Farwell, White, Paxson, White, Evans, White again, Wynn, White. Great to see them. Mr. Gamilla in the middle. He rounded up a big group. Does it seem to be more crowded tonight than usual? It seems like an extra this, big crowd. This is a big night. I think yeah. people are excited to return. Matt, Matt French and Brandy French on the left. <laughs> Linton and Kisa Young in from out of town, I believe. That George Young. The summer hours. Uh, the Pie Lance. Oh, now, they, now they're just making it too hard. <laughs> You'll see that the uh, the Rex members wear the ducals on the ribbons. Then you don't have a ducal and a ribbon, you just in tails. So it looks like we're starting to see some of the non members come up and pay their. Yeah, and we'd like respects. to actually introduce the pages. We can't forget oh, the pages. We, no, we cannot. No, and of course, Rex has a page, and then so does the Queen. Okay. And the pages of uh, Mr. Patrick, Christy Kearney. We'll see them pretty soon. And
and Paxton Leger White. And that's, that's Paxton Leger White, White that's the right. son of Mr. and Mrs. Paxton White. And he is a student in Metairie Park Country Day School. And he loves flag football and basketball. And his father was a Duke in the court of 1999. And his great, great grandfather, Charles Farwell, reigned as King of Carnival in 1898. Now, he might set the record for the tallest page ever. He's 5'8", <laughs> you know, very large for his age. He wears an 11 and a half shoe, 11 and a half wide. I've been, I've had the honor of hunting with him on a couple of different occasions, and he's just the most polite young man. Really excited to see him as a page tonight. And our other page is Mr. Patrick Christie Kearney, the son of Mr. and Mrs. David Wilkins Kearney. And he is a student at Trinity Episcopal School, where he is made honor roll. And his father was a Duke in the Rex Court of 1996, and grandfather Mike Kearney reigned as the King of Carnival in 2016. His uncle, Mike Kearney Jr., was supposed to be a page in 1979, but that was the year that Mardi Gras was canceled because of a police strike. So their first attempt at a page did not work. Well, at least we managed to get one through tonight. And there's not really dancing at this point. Um, you'll see that uh, it's mostly the Rex members have already paid their respects and others are, will now go up. And we'll see a little bit more of this before, before the ballroom floor is cleared. So those pages have had an extremely long day today. They get up at the crack of dawn to get uh, get into their costumes, have all of their makeup put on, and yes, they are they are wearing makeup, and yes, their siblings do tease them about that. Got to the Rex Den, um, they got dressed, rode in the parade, and then had other activities at either the King's House or the Queen's House before the ball, and they will go on until you know, roughly midnight tonight, and, and they're holding up very well for that this group of pages. Fairly impressed. Shelby Mills within the organization is the one who trains the pages. I call her the page whisperer because she can get <laughs> sixth and seventh grade boys to do just about anything in the world and to remember how to do it the right way. So Shelby just does a wonderful job. Sean and Lynn Watkins, who is part of the etiquette, the importance of the etiquette. Yep. Sounds good. of Carnival wears a gold silk lame gown featuring a sweetheart neckline and A-line silhouette. The Cezanne Perone St. Paul designed creation has a geometric grid pattern built around the shape of the gown. 
seams are hidden beneath a delicate linear beading, and the simple rhinestone motif in the bodice squares evolve into larger stylized fleur-de-lis as the grid work opens in proportion to the hem. The vertical beaded lines blend into the points of the ornately encrusted scallop lace trim, encircling the hem and sweeping train. Austrian crystals, seed beads, and bugles create radiance and reflect light. At the neckline of the Queen of Carnival's gown is the School of Design's impressive Medici collar of heavily beaded gold lace covered with crystals, gold bugles, and Savarsky margarita flowers. And of course, the dress is so gorgeous and so intricate, and let's not forget the, uh, the mantle and the collar that you'll see throughout the evening. But now it's time to thank those who made tonight's broadcast possible. Funding for the Rex Ball and the meeting of the courts of Rex and Comus is made possible through generous community support. There's no place like New Orleans at Mardi Gras. At First Horizon, we are excited to keep finding ways to support the city. This uniquely New Orleans celebration and special broadcasts on WYES-TV that capture the heart of our city. Support is provided by the law firm of Jones Walker, established in 1937 with offices throughout the U.S., providing a comprehensive range of legal services to a wide range of local, regional, national, and international client base. Online at joneswalker.com. Dreams. Dreams keep us growing. Dreams keep us thriving. Dreams keep us believing in the power of teamwork. Hancock Whitney, your dream, our mission. Hello, I'm Emmett Dupas, lead partner at Bienville Capital Group, where we specialize in finding solutions to help companies and their employees reach their financial goals. The Rink, a unique collection of shops and select offices located in the heart of the Garden District. Ample parking available. The Rink, a historic space with a modern vision. Brennan's Restaurant offers modern interpretations of classic Creole cuisine served in Brennan's elegant dining rooms. Brennan's in the French Quarter, 417 Royal Street. Premium parking has a space for you. Easy and convenient parking all across the city. Find more information on the app or at premiumparking.com. Mr. and Mrs. William F. Grace Jr. are proud to support this broadcast of the Rex Ball and the Meeting of the Courts and all of the other quality programs on WYS. Hail Rex, hail Comas, and happy Mardi Gras. Additional support by Bellwether Technology. Adlers, honored to be part of New Orleans tradition since 1898. Chef McCall, proud to celebrate Carnival and honor the monarchs of Mardi Gras and the tradition of service before self. Gallo Mechanical, commercial air conditioning and plumbing, design, build, and service for over 70 years. Gallo Mechanical. Experience small home retirement living through Poitras Home Reimagined and the Greenhouse Project. Standard Mortgage, helping Louisiana families purchase homes since 1925. Special guests, I am so glad to once again welcome Mrs. Gail Benson. How are you? <laughs> Great. What a beautiful day today was. Oh my goodness. And Rex and the Queen and King. Oh my goodness. And you know, Evie worked for us for a little while. I'm just so happy for her. She's such a sweet girl. Well, she talks about in her interview how much she enjoyed doing that. So what an experience. And very much of a diehard Saints and Pelicans fan as well. <laughs> It's Marquesa. <laughs> oh, it is absolutely gorgeous. Thank you. It is absolutely Thank gorgeous. You. Now, I know that the Rex organization and Pro Bono Publico is very dear to your heart, isn't it? It is. But you know, Rex, like we, gives so much to the community, and that's why I love Rex so much. It gives so much to the community, and so we love that. So it's really a blessing. Well, um, philanthropy, of course, is key to when not, you, you have your day job. I've always believed in giving back, and that's 
just part of it. And the Rex organization gives back so much, and so do we, and so it's just a great combination. Well, um, I think I might have asked you this question last year, but I always love to hear the answer. Some of your early Mardi Gras memories as a oh. New Orleans girl. Grew up on the West Bank when Appaloosa Street would be the parades, and we'd watch Choctaw, and it was just a lot of fun. Did you have a favorite costume? Um, no, not really. I loved all the glitter and all the beautiful colors, and I loved the glass beads in those days. They were so pretty. Oh, those glass beads from Czechoslovakia? Oh, they were beautiful. <laughs> right now and I'm getting ready to go to Paris and I'm going to be meeting with the people over there who are building Notre Dame and we're going to bring our designers and architects from New Orleans to meet with them. I was recently in Washington for the Washington Mardi Gras and I met with the ambassador to France and so he helped me organize all of this which was really nice. Uh, Greg Benson and I had breakfast with him and I was just, I was so touched. He came with a pad and pencil and wrote what I said and what I needed, which was so touching. Folks, I think, take St. Louis Cathedral a little bit for granted. They don't realize that building stands there, but it needs help. They don't, they really don't know how bad it is. I mean, it's in really bad shape. And if we don't save it, it's an iconic building. And if we don't save that, it's gonna die. And so I'm putting on a big effort to get that done. So I'm here with the parents of the Queen, uh, Fritz and Guaf Miguel, and they've had quite the day today. All right, guys, so let's talk about it. What was the one thing that stands out? Guaf me, tell me how it went today. What was the experience like? I think it was just so exciting to share it with our whole city that we love, watching her watch the parade, being honored with Rex, who's so amazing, all that, sharing all that happens and the joy and the commitment to New Orleans that Rex has and watching every absorb every ounce of it and just want to share it with everyone. It's just been amazing to see. Fantastic. Now, Fritz, children aren't born knowing how to scepter or having diplomacy skills or knowing how to give toasts. What went into this process? How did she figure out all this out? Because she has just done a perfect job today. Well, Evie's a magnificent young lady, and I give so much of the credit to my wife, Guafi. <laughs> um, she's had a blast. She's just really done an amazing job. Um, there's a lot of effort that goes into this. The organization is so amazing. When, 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 you know, I've been a lieutenant for a while, and all of a sudden, everything comes to focus on you, and you realize, like, this is unbelievable. And they've been tremendous in all of their different roles, helping Evie know what to do, she comes by, I'm not going to say she comes by being a queen naturally, but she comes by her ability to just communicate with people is unbelievable. Unbelievable. All right, so I've got to ask this question, Guapi. Yesterday you had a college student in your house. Now you have a queen in your house. Does that muck up the pecking order? Does she still have to clean the room, do the chores? You know, what, what are things like that? Well, I will say the whole getting dressed definitely feels like a queen and watching all the magic that goes into that to make that happen. But she still had to help her mother find her phone before we left for the ball tonight. So there's still a lot, keeping up with her studies and all the both. And as of midnight tonight, she becomes the birthday girl. So she's got a little bit going on. Oh so. my gosh, so her yes. birthday is tomorrow. Her birthday is tomorrow. tomorrow. Yeah, her really golden need birthday. anything else? Exactly. 22 on the 22nd. So. Yep. It was meant to be. All right, Fritz, was there one moment today that really caught you, that something that you'll remember forever? That's, that's pretty easy for me because um, Wathby and Evie and I have a long, a long tradition of seeing each other on the route 
me and horseback and them on the streets. And so riding up to the reviewing stands was just incredible, incredible. And to see her standing there and then to get to turn around and watch uh, Ludovico toast her and her toast back was just incredible. Fair to say it was one of the best days of your lives? Oh, Easily. besides our wedding. <laughs> Sharing it with friends and family in our community, it just could not be better. I mean, it, how, how special is it? So, And then this whole presentation tonight, how amazing. That, that's truly the amazing thing, is being out there with our city and being able to ride with the people and, and talk to them as we walk by and be thanked and thank them. And uh, I just, I would also really like to say to our all of our law enforcement, I mean, they were incredible. They were out there in numbers. I know the organization and all the other organizations did an incredible job pulling everybody together with the mayor, and I'm just so thankful we had a great month. Congratulations. Super excited. I'm glad you had a great day. I don't even want to ask what the birthday party is going to be like, so we'll just leave it at that. I think you. I think y'all are all invited. It's here right it's gonna now. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. Bye. The parents of the queen. Back to you, Peg. Happy all morning. right. Thank you. We um, are awaiting Miss Us. Stephanie Fioli is going to be joining us. She is the wife of our monarch, and I know she has stories to tell. Here she comes in the most beautiful dress. Welcome, welcome. You look gorgeous. <laughs> that is the most exquisite dress. Tell me about it. I um, went to visit my daughter in New York. She lives in New York, and was walking and found this. These colors attracted me. Uh huh. Yes. And, and you know. One of the things that I find so beautifully um, appropriate is the pin and what that means in the meaning. Um, did this, this come from your husband? Or did you have some input in the pin? Or? This is all from my husband. Oh, it's so thoughtful. Yes. How did he tell you he was going to be a monarch? Well, he was came back from a meeting. He was, was in the meeting in the morning on his way to his work, and he told me, I forgot some documents. Can I stop by and pick them up? And I don't have my keys. Can you open the door for me? And I said, yes, I'm at home. I'll be here waiting. And he walked in and he said, I have to tell you something. I am Rex. <laughs> Were you stunned? I was, I couldn't believe it. How did you tell your children? Well, they came over. Uh, my daughter lives in New York, as I was saying, and my son lives here. And we waited for my daughter to come home and tell her we had dinner and they were not expecting it. And we, my son, my husband started to tell them what had happened and they could not believe it. <laughs> now the planning that goes into this just must be so enormous in terms of, of doing the, the proper, the proper etiquette as the, the, of the monarch. There are a lot of social activities, aren't there? Yes, there's a lot. There, it's, been, it's been amazing. We've had, had feel so honored. It's been a wonderful experience and every, we've enjoyed every single minute of it. Well, we also just have to talk about, and uh, I mean, the list of your husband's accomplishments are so, is so long, but philanthropy, and that is such a part of your family for so long, with this Murray Foundation and so much more. Uh, that spirit of giving, where does that come from internally? Well, we are the fourth, fourth generation um, in the family to be involved in the Zamuri Foundation. My husband co-chairs the Zamuri Foundation. And um, so we feel it's, we're blessed to be able to contribute to this wonderful community. There's, uh, it gives us such a joy and we are, we are, The Audubon Institute seems to be very near to your heart. Yes, my grandmother uh, was a very, connected with the, with the Ottoman Institute, and she was always very enthusiastic about it. So we continue that, and we will continue. Do you ever get to go over to Jaguar Jungle and just visit? Uh, <laughs> that is so much fun. I love so that fun. part of the park. She was an, she was an archaeologist and uh, did all her work in Central America. So that was what brought her to con contribute to such an important uh, part of the Ottoman. Definitely, and that started with my great-grandfather, so like I said, it's the fourth generation, and we feel honored to be part of that philanthropy. Well, after, I, I guess, after Ash Wednesday, I, I hope you all get to rest a little bit. Are you going to go on a trip or just take it easy? Just
just take it easy. And <laughs> we have enjoyed every minute of this carnival season. And um, so now we're staying here and enjoying some rest. What are some of your Mardi Gras memories? Um, my, especially being in St. Charles Avenue with my grandmother and my father. And we would come and visit. We didn't live here, but we would come and visit once or twice a year. And Carnival was one of our favorite seasons. And we spent it waiting for, uh, for Mardi Gras. Uh, yeah. And how did you meet your husband? In Costa Rica, my parents uh, were knew my, knew my husband's parents. and. We just met through mutual friendships oh. since I was 15 years old. Oh, you're only 15? Oh, so you've known each other for it's a very a long, long time. Yes. Long time. Well, it seems like you both have a real sense of travel and spirit of traveling from the profile that we saw earlier. What are some of your favorite places? Uh, one of our favorite places is Italy, of course. Loico's background is Italian. and. One of his favorite places is the Dolomites and Tuscany. His mother um, is from Tuscan origin and went to school there and used to visit the Dolomites when hiking every summer. And that's where the, uh, the pin that, that he designed is an Edelweiss that, in honor of her mom. Well, thank mom. you so much for spending time with us. Yes. And once again, congratulations. Thank you so it's much. We're excited for you. Oh, thank you so thank much. You. And now it's time to move back over to Will. Hey, Peg. Uh, in the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina, some of the Rex members formed the Pro Bono Publico Foundation to live into the organization's motto of for the public good. Uh, these days, the organization, the foundation, raises more than a million dollars annually to support New Orleans charter schools and charter school support organizations. I'm here with two of the board members, Dr. Kenneth St. Charles and Story Charbonnet, who are gonna tell us a little about what the foundation's been up to this year. Story? Peggy, good evening. So we're coming off of a record year in 2022-23. We raised a little over $1.6 million. That takes our total giving up to about $13 million. And uh, I think that we have uh, tried to communicate that historically we've been primarily programmatic grants, and that is giving to the charter schools and the charter support organizations. And that has been very successful. But especially coming out of the pandemic, uh, the board has thought that we should move a little of our monies into strategic grants. And we, we gave two meaningful grants this year. Um, and I'm gonna let um, Ken talk about that. <clears throat> Thank you, Story. So yes, we, um, it's, it's a real pleasure, a real privilege to serve on the foundation. So many of the Rex members are so generous and believe in education and the things that we do. So as Story mentioned, we're actually changing a little bit of the focus. Uh, in addition to supporting education, which is so important for our children, we also are making some strategic multi-year grants, um, one to New Schools New Orleans and the other to the Great New Orleans Foundation. Uh, New Schools New Orleans will focus on teacher retention, teacher recruitment, which is so important. Great North Foundation will support and work on those things that, that are supporting the uh, board development, uh, relationships, making the board stronger so that the um, charter schools and the charter school systems keep that focus and that they are able to continue to support our children. So again, it's a great privilege to serve on the uh, foundation board. Um, I know our Rex this year mentioned uh, his belief in wanting to support uh, civic uh, endeavors, and I think that's what we all want to do. That's right. And I guess if I would uh, want to close with a message from the foundation board members, it's that we need everybody's help. You know, it's not just financial. Um, you know, when, when we commit $375,000 to board training and such, uh, we, we understand the significance not just of the board, but of the teachers. So we're in uh, new schools for New Orleans for teacher retention. Um, but we need more board members. We need more people in the city to be involved in not only our charter schools, but also in the charter support organizations. So if I could ask any of you guys anything, it would just be to give us your time, not just your resources. But thank you very much for our generosity of our Rex membership. 
gentlemen, thank you for everything that you and the foundation does for the school children of New Orleans. It really is inspiring to, uh, to all the rest of us. Thank Peg, you back over to you. All right, thank you, Will. And we have a very special guest, Lynn Favreau Nolan. And of course, she is the 50 year queen. Hard to believe it's 50 years, though. It is. <laughs> and you almost weren't the 50 year queen. You almost said no. Well, the, no. The, the, the 60s and 70s were very rebellious. And when my parents told me I was going to be queen of carnival, I decided, well, I'll make my debut. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm glad I did. And also, 12th night. You and 12th night. Book uh, yes, I was. Carnival, I was 12th you? night. Oh, boy. And um, so many connections here, too, of course. Nell Nolan being one of your uh, your sisters in law. And last year's queen, Betty. Betty, we're gonna, yeah. We're going to show, though, let's go some, uh, some footage from when your reign and also. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. It was so much fun. And, and, your and, and my uh, Dr. Howard Mahorner. Oh. And, and, and he was just he was just so sweet. He would send me flowers every year oh. on Mardi Gras. He was just a wonderful man. Oh, and he was a great king. He kept up with me. <laughs> <laughs> and that dress, spectacular. Yeah. And a whole lot went into the decoration of the dress. Well, the dress, is, the dress is a, a work of art. It, it weighed 23 pounds. Uh. And uh, it, it was, it's, it's on um, display right now in Baton Rouge at the Washington Mardi Gras because uh, Holly Bright wore it in 1975. And then it came back to me and my father donated it to the Louisiana State Museum. Uh, and you recently had uh, your own luncheon. Your own, I got your my court. 50 year court together. We had 11 of the 17 survivors. There we oh, are. Oh. And, and I, and the, and the gentleman kneeling was one of my pages. Oh, that's author wisdom, and it was uh, wonderful to meet him as an adult. Oh, <laughs> I mean that couldn't be more dear to have them all together. And it was just wonderful. We had a, it was, it was really great to see them. I haven't seen them, some of them in 50 years, but I, I, I'm still close to a lot of my maids. Well, I know you live in New York these days, in upstate New York. Upstate New York. I hope you get to come down from time to time. We do. Visit. We get down here pretty often, and we yeah. love it. And your husband's name is T. T. Okay, wonderful. Well, and once again, I love the, uh, the necklace as well. That's a beautiful king. Well, this is uh, the pin that my king gave me when I was when yes. I was queen. Well, once again, congratulations. Thank you very much Thank for visiting you. us. Thank you. It's great to see it you. It has been wonderful. Looking forward to meeting you. <laughs> Thank you. And now, though, it's time to go over to Errol. San Porco is a small, yeah. a little town close to Siena. But the ones we from Siena okay. are more like, yeah. you know. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm with Mario Florenzini, who's the council general for this area. He's headquartered out of Houston, but this area includes like Louisiana and Texas and, and Oklahoma, Arkansas and, uh, and all of the trade. So, how is uh, business between Italy and the United States? Oh, I mean, relationships are beautiful, are optim, are excellent, I have to say, under all circumstances in every sector. And in Houston, Texas, particularly on the scientific sector, on the collaboration in the space uh, sector. Uh, so Ladies it's really excellent seats. relationship. We expect the imminent arrival. What, what did you think of the, uh, the flag throwers? Uh, the flag throwers actually was something that remind me of my childhood because oh. when I was a kid I was used to go to Siena to see the Palio and all the spectacular like fly flo uh, flying flower were incredible so uh. they remind me of my childhood. So did you ever throw a flag? No, unfortunately <laughs> no. no, unfortunately not. What is it about Italy that's just so colorful and you know the food is so great and the, and, the, and the culture is just so colorful is it that Mediterranean air or what is it I think it's the diversity of Italy Italy is a small country but inside the country it's got many different region and sometimes different like from a city to another city 
So every region and every city developed like their own culture, their own cuisine, uh, their own tradition. So if you travel like uh, 50 kilometers, then you're gonna eat another kind of pasta, <laughs> a different kind of cheese, yeah. and you're gonna drink a different kind of wine. I think this diversity is really what is makes Italy so attracting and appealing for. And people don't realize that Italy is a relatively new country as one united country. I mean, it's an old land and everything else. But was you, which year was the uh, unification, the 1800s or? Uh... 1861, it was the unification of the country. So as you said, it was quite recent, uh, but Italians has always existed, you know? Uh, even before, when Italy was divided in small countries, like, uh, you know, the, the, the state of the Pope, of the Grand Duke of Tuscany. The Tuscany region, yeah. Exactly. Even at that time, there was an Italian culture that it was unifying the people. So the Italians has always existed, but Italy as a, as, a, as a unified country is a young country, that, that's exact. Now, you know, New Orleans had the largest Sicilian migration um, in the country, that, that, that we became the largest city. And it was a very great population that, that, that we have here from the Sicilian country. So. I know, I know. Sicilian and other, you know, people from other regions from Italy came to the United States starting at the end of the 1800s. Uh, they were looking for a better life, for jobs, basically. Mm -hmm. So this, like, has, has uh, left like an important tradition, the Italian-American sure. tradition, that now is very alive here in, in, in New Orleans as well. And may it live forever and get stronger. Thank you very much. Sure. Thank okay. you. Let's Thank go, you. Let's go back to Peggy. Thank you. Thank you very much. And we are awaiting the arrival of the captain of Comus with a really special invitation, which we'll be able to share with you, I'm, I'm very glad to say, through the magic of Carnival. Um, so the, the floor is being clear. That's kind of hard to do because a lot of folks, of course, have enjoyed. Well, that actually it was very well done. It's almost completely clear because they know uh, what we're waiting for. The captain also coming with Comus lieutenants. And note that the colors of, of their their um, raiment are totally different, not purple, green, and gold, other colors as well. And all of this is in anticipation um, coming up shortly. The Comus Ball, and actually the Comus Ball is already taking place um, um, at, uh, th at this time and um, starts a little bit later than, than Rex itself. The right across the, the street. Right across the street. And the meeting of the courts is what we are certainly looking forward to. Ladies and but gentlemen, please take an, your seats. It has to be an invitation. The captain of the mystic crew of Comus <laughs> uh -huh. and his aides are about to arrive. And he is bringing with him a missive, if you will, a message, a royal invitation. This has been happening in roughly this form since about 1882. So this is very much steeped in history and tradition. And once this invitation is proffered, um, the, the uh, court of Rex will go across the street. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise. The captain of the mystic crew of Comus has arrived to present an invitation to His Majesty Rex to visit the Comus Ball. And you see he is holding a document which we actually are privy to and will read to you as our, our, our monarch reads it to. I'll, I'll wait until he opens it first. I feel like he's taller than usual this year. He does look a little taller, doesn't he? And that music is called The Dancing Butterfly, a very traditional song from the 1930s, used at this part of the evening. There's our pages.
All right. Greetings. Salute. Saludos, Your Majesty. Any fewer greetings would be a real travesty. Given your fluency and knowledge of each dialect, there's no denying your tremendous intellect. A doctor of political science and a professor at Tulane is your crown due for the lofty purchase you've obtained. A think tank director and Phi Beta Kappa to boot, a closer look at your past will reveal the real root. As the Murray's co-chair, you've invested civically, undertaking those roles with impressive humility. Over the years, you've chaired GNOF, BGR, and PACE. Your efforts have made our community a better place. So let your cares tonight slip away to another day. And come meet come as you know the way. Grab your beautiful queen, Evie, by the hand to close this year's carnival in a fashion grand. And now yeah, we'll see the departure of Rex and his court. I believe we did see a nod of assent that he, he said yes. Now he's going he to, uh, yes. to go. <laughs> it would be so sad if he didn't. <laughs> All right. So it takes a while for Rex and the Queen of Carnival and the court to get up on the stage. Well, it takes a while for them to get off the stage, too. <laughs> and there's quite a process involved with getting this small handful of people across the street to the Marriott Hotel. And we should also point out, though, that even though the court will leave the Rex Ball, the Rex Ball continues for about a half hour. As we'll see in a little bit, there's a red carpet that is strewn across Canal Street. Canal Street's not always known for it um, being perfectly clean and tidy, so the red <laughs> carpet helps to keep everybody's dresses and, and shoes uh, nice and clean as they go. And, and, they're, and they're barricades. Uh, yes, absolutely. And excuse me, just to say at the end, at the neckline, I just wanted to show you the beautiful Medici collar. And it is heavily beaded gold lace covered with crystals, gold bugles, and Zabarsky margarita flowers, and the signature gold mantle with white ermine trim and royal jewelry, including the crown and scepter, complete her royal raiment. It's a great view of it all. And a lot of that has to come off to cross Canal Street, by the way. The train, the mantle, um, there's going to be a little bit of surgery on the uh, on the wardrobe right now <laughs> to get uh, them in a condition to, uh, to go across the street. There are, by the way, you know, contingency plans in case it rains on Mardi Gras night, which involves the use of limousines to get across 100 yards of Canal Street, which in a Medici collar and a dress like that is not an easy thing to do. You don't fit in most limousines, so there is a system in place to, uh, to do it if need be. Hopefully we'll never need to do it. Hopefully we will. We've been pretty fortunate, actually. The beautiful dress. And learning how to move grace, very gracefully uh, is, is, is a challenge in, uh, in this beautiful royal raiment. I think the theme for the year, separate and apart from the theme of the, the parade, is academics. These are two brilliant academics that we have here as Rex and the Queen of Carnival. And to really pay homage and honor to their hard work, dedication, intelligence, and philanthropy, both of them, is really just wonderful. say Rex really lived into its motto this year by selecting Ludovico Fioli 
to be Rex 2023. He just embodies everything about the pro bono spirit that we all aspire to. And we, you know, we we're talking about the, the king's pen, his own personal pen, and the fact that the spokes uh, look like a spokes in a wheel, and he's a very avid cyclist um, among so many, but he has a, 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 some spare time. Sceptering to the Rex audience. tonight it's 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 far easier in terms of some <laughs> social obligations isn't it <laughs> it's definitely a different point of perspective but i mean abby's doing amazing and she's gorgeous ladies and, and gentlemen it's, it's everyone is invited her, to talking to her about the experience and everything that's just happened in the past week well the white family of course has long been involved with rex did you get any uh, advice from any of your family members or? before the ball you mean Yes, yes. I have two cousins that were queens, and they gave me a lot of pro tips before everything happened, and they were great. They were great. Well, what are you up to these days? These days, I'm in Austin, and I'm about to start a new job on Thursday, working for a racetrack. Oh, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Have you always loved horses? This is in keeping with the theme of... <laughs> it's actually a car racetrack, but oh, everyone asks me that. Okay. Yeah. What does this mean? Like, whatever. And they were like, you're going to be the 2021 at the time, queen. And then it got pushed to 2022. And yeah. so we knew for a while, but it was so much fun and a wonderful experience and so special as the 150th year. And I had a blast. What an honor. Well, thank you so much for being with us. We thank really you for having it's me. Great to see you. Yeah, yeah great to see you. Yeah. <laughs> and now, though, it is time to move over to Errol with a special guest. For sure. Well, we're, we're really honored to have High Royalty here 
We got the king and the queen of Zulu, uh, Nick Spears and yes. Chrissy Spears. Now, now, how did it work in Zulu? That, that the king picked the queen? Yes, the legs. Now, was it much of a thought? Did you have to go and think, well, who should I pick to be queen? The thought was never a second thought, <laughs> I'd tell you that. <laughs> so, what's it like to be married to the king? It's amazing, actually. He's very busy, very uh -huh. busy guy, um, has a large leadership role. And so it's been an amazing experience to watch him grow throughout the Zulu organization and to kind of develop and, and become a, a leader. So it's been a great a great time. And what's it like to be married to the queen? <laughs> very expensive. <laughs> yeah. Well, the, the thing that's unique about Zulu is that the Kings is selected by an election. You all have an election. That's correct. I've actually happened to drive down Broad Street when you all that was in May that you had the election. It's in May, the last weekend. And in people May. campaigning and all the things got going on. And yes, sir. You had a very elaborate campaign. <laughs> and, uh, didn't you have something like the uh, Nick Fest? Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, the Nick Fest. Well, yes. Uh, so you say it's your own mini jazz fest, really? That's what mean? some people say, but it was just some creative minds. You know, it's about the team. Uh -huh. You know, so I had a great campaign committee that put it together for me. So that's what it's all about, teamwork. Yeah. Did, 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 did you have experience in Mardi Gras kids? Well, yeah, visiting all of the parades, visiting uh -huh. the Zulu Parade, Rex. We've seen them all, the truck floats, since we were little. So yeah. it's been an amazing experience to have this 360 experience and now be reigning as King Zulu and Queen Zulu. Yeah. You have a family heritage in Zulu. I mean, you pretty much had to go see Zulu if you wanted to or not, right? Uh, I think so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we watched this televised on WYS Rex Ball uh -huh. for many, many years. So it's just an honor to be here in this moment, in this in this room, in this coronation. So we're very happy to be here. Yeah. Now, unlike some kings and queens, both of you ride. There's a queen's float and there's a king's float. So what was your experience like on the float? It was amazing. The crowds were so excited today. The weather was beautiful. A little warm at the end, but it was amazing. They, they were full of energy and life to see the kids, all of the fellowship and friendship, everybody coming out together. It was a simply magnificent time. It, it, it looked time. like a very friendly crowd. Yeah, yeah. it was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> and how about you? How about your experience? It was very warm today, but I'll take it over the rain. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so what time did y'all's day start today? 2 a.m. 2 a.m. 2 a.m. 2 a.m. 2 a.m. Yes. yes, we've been up since 2 a.m. Why? What, 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 <laughs> what went on at 2 a.m.? Well, it's the whole entourage. It's makeup people coming in. And it's, uh, so it's a process to get us there on time. And I tell you, we need it every minute and then some. <laughs> really? <laughs> and so the makeup people, they come to you and they start doing all the stuff. Yeah, and then they, they start getting us together, making us fabulous. Okay. <laughs> and so what time do you have to be on the floats? They like us to be there for like 7:30, uh -huh. and I think we got there at 7:45. Yeah, <laughs> right. we needed every. You see, when you're king and queen, you can be you can come every time, every, every time you want, you know. So. Yes. Yeah. And the parade, the parade was a nice parade, and it seemed to run them pretty much on time. Huh? I would like to think so. It's very nice today. So I mean, family event. I think the weather cooperated with everyone. It wasn't too cold. It was very warm. So we thank God for that. Yeah, and the first responders too. They were amazing out there to keep everybody safe and. Um, you know, just just healthy and well, and, and checking on everyone. So I think we had a great ride. Yeah. Did y'all have a lot of your family out there? Yes. Yeah. From California. Yes. 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 People came to, to celebrate with us and to to wish us well on this uh, rain this year. Yeah. You know, what's gonna happen tomorrow? You you gotta, you gotta have to celebrate with them tomorrow. <laughs> you know, they came all the way from California, man. Right. You gotta, you gotta... We'll probably have some family time tomorrow. Some downtime. Just some family time. Quiet time. I don't know about that. I think I'm going to be in the bed still. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. Congratulations to you. Right? You all are a beautiful royal couple. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank, you, you, so much. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Happy okay. Mardi Gras was okay. left up. Okay. <laughs> okay. Let's go back to Peggy. Peg? Thank you, Air. Wow, how wonderful. This year's proclamation is very much in keeping with the equestrian theme of this year's parade. Oh, but the internationally famous artist that is his own youth a unique approach to it as Fox 8's Dave McNamara shows us. New Orleans
Dickens artist Henry Caselli made a lot of sketches before he created one that he felt would best represent this year's Rex Parade. There's a lot of pageantry with uh, flag dancing. But a Mardi Gras proclamation was a new challenge for an artist who has spent a lifetime sharing feelings and emotions with watercolors. It's not just painting the surface, it's going real deep inside the person, knowing the person, knowing them, and trying to catch that essence of that person. Caselli grew up in the racially mixed Ninth Ward, and his paintings capture the characters of his neighborhood. But that changed on his 19th birthday. I looked at a Life magazine uh, before leaving for, for art school that morning, and there was a photo of a Marine, uh, and the capture was Marine spends 19th birthday in the jungles of Vietnam, and it's a young Marine this deep in water with this bazooka over him, some, some rounds. Uh, I'm here having fun, he's there, what? And all of it re evolved around, I've got to do something to record this. He joined the Marine Corps as a combat artist. He drew these images of his fellow Marines in 1968. He called this one, Young Men Growing Old. It's the pieces that were done right there in the moment in the mud at, at the time it was happening that are the most valuable, most meaningful to me. After the war, Caselli continued doing portraits, like this one of boxer Muhammad Ali. I said, by any chance do you know the children's game Cat's Cradle? And he took the string and said, yeah, do you know Jacob's Ladder? And he started showing me how to do Jacob's Ladder. And it was just, again, that magic, that click that took place. Caselli ended up in the Oval Office, painting the official portrait of President Ronald Reagan. And it was very, very informal. It was just really, really, really wonderful. And Caselli was at Cape Kennedy sketching space shuttle astronauts, including John Glenn's return to space in 1998. John Glenn was a Marine Corps general at that time with a lot of Marine Corps experience and NASA experience. And I saw it as the old general right before the battle with his head in prayer, thinking about what's ahead. Henry Caselli's paintings show much more than you could ever capture with a camera. And that brings us back to Rex, which first published colorful proclamations to attract tourists in the late 1800s. These edicts, proclamations, would go out to train stations for decades and decades. Now the proclamations are works of art, and Rex turned to Caselli. This year's theme for the parade is the Palio di Siena, which is a horse race that takes place in Siena, Italy, twice a year. And it is their equivalent of our Mardi Gras. And I found finally decided that I wanted more of this, this very abstract image. And that image of a lone horse in a dark space before the chaotic ride was chosen. What I wanted was a dramatic image, an impact, which is, that's what I aim for. The proclamation feels powerful and majestic in its simplicity, and it carries all of the feeling that flows from the brush of a great artist. And now it's time to move back over to Will. Will? Hey, Peg. I'm here with Orleans Parish Sheriff Susan Hudson, who was a huge part this year of getting Mardi Gras back to normal, getting all the parade routes back to normal by bringing in supplemental police from around the state to get the routes back. So, Sheriff Hudson, thank you so much for all your hard work in doing that. Tell us a little bit about how it went, what you had to do, and, and just tell us about that process. Well, first, we thank you for having me. Uh, we met with the presidents, uh, or the captains of Rex and Zulu and also Pygmalion. And they had a meeting, they said, we need help. And this is mid-January, so we're like, okay, can we do this? I brought all my team to the meeting. I said, can we do this? They said, yes. I said, well, let's do this for our community. And we were, we were so happy to do it. And when they talked to us about expanding the parade route so more people could see it, uh, we were all in, we were all in. We were so excited today being in the parades to see the supplemental police officers right. on the street corners 
participating in Mardi Gras, in many cases for the first times, and everybody was just thanking them yes. constantly for uh, for participating and for helping us to get Mardi Gras back to uh, to normal. Now, you had another interesting carnival situation. You had to learn to ride a horse this That's year. That's right. That's right. Tell us about that. Yeah, Frances is her name, and she's uh, been our horse for a number of years at the uh, Orleans Parish Sheriff's Office, and she is the oldest, so that's the one they had me to ride on. So gentle, and then I had four of our horses flanking me, so very safe, but I gotta say, I was really relaxed today. And so you were riding in Zulu? In Zulu, so I sat on her for about half an hour to 45 minutes as we got ready, and then about two and a half hours on the parade route. And uh, I gotta say, I was a little sore afterwards, but wow, that is a vantage point that you just cannot, you can't buy. It was amazing. I know what you mean. You're really down in among the people and you see just the crowds, the hundreds of thousands. And it was so big. So now you've got a place to go after the ball tonight and it's not to the Queen's Supper or to any other parties. What are no. you going to do? I'm going to trade in the ball gown for my uniform and we're going to Bourbon Street to shut it down. So just a couple hours to go. Very excited about that. It's been a great experience, but it's time. All good things must come to an end. Well, this was a great Mardi Gras, and thank you yeah. so much for everything that you've done. Peg, Sheriff Susan Hudson really came through for Mardi Gras this year. Back to you. Thank you, Will. And now, here is our second Carnival Quiz question. And now, our second question. During both the Rex and Comus Balls, a march is played. What opera is it from? We'll have the third and final question a little later in our program. And now, though, let's take a time this moment to thank some folks who made tonight's broadcast possible. Funding for the Rex Ball and the meeting of the courts of Rex and Comus is made possible through generous community support. There's no place like New Orleans at Mardi Gras. At First Horizon, we are excited to keep finding ways to support the city. This uniquely New Orleans celebration and special broadcasts on WYES-TV that capture the heart of our city. Mr. and Mrs. Michael Bright White are proud to support WYES and this broadcast of the Rex Ball and wishes everyone a happy Mardi Gras. Hail Rex! CapTrust, bespoke high net worth, family office, and institutional investment services. More information is at captrust.com. Support is provided by the law firm of Jones Walker, established in 1937 with offices throughout the U.S., providing a comprehensive range of legal services to a wide range of local, regional, national, and international client base. Online at joneswalker.com. Brennan's Restaurant offers modern interpretations of classic Creole cuisine served in Brennan's elegant dining rooms. Brennan's in the French Quarter, 417 Royal Street. Dawn Services would like to hail Rex and is proud to support this special program. Premium Parking has a space for you. Easy and convenient parking all across the city. Find more information on the app or at premiumparking.com. Mr. and Mrs. William F. Grace Jr. are proud to support this broadcast of the Rex Ball and the Meeting of the Courts and all of the other quality programs on WYS. Hail Rex, hail Comas, and happy Mardi Gras. Adlers, honored to be part of New Orleans tradition since 1898. Chaff McCall, proud to celebrate Carnival and honor the monarchs of Mardi Gras and the tradition of service before self. Also brought to you by Arthur J. Gallagher Risk Management Services. Any challenge, any risk, anywhere in the world. Gallo Mechanical, commercial air conditioning and plumbing. Design, build, and service for over 70 years. Gallo Mechanical. Standard Mortgage, helping Louisiana families purchase homes since 1925. Home Care Solutions, compassionate in-home elder care to extend your loved one's independence. 
arrival of Rex and his court to the Forest Commons Ball. Welcome again to our live broadcast. Joining me this evening once again, Errol Laborde, executive editor for Renaissance Publishing and the author of the book, Mardi Gras Chronicles of the New Orleans Carnival. Hello, Biggie. Hi. How are you doing? And Will French. And Will is the historian and archivist for the Rex organization is very, very involved with a lot of the archives, with a lot of very, very rare material. It's been quite fun. He'll tell, you, tell us more about that a little bit later. But we're so excited to be here. And before we move over to Comist, you had a, you had an anecdote that you wanted to share. Well, a while ago, um, Will was talking, we had the flag throwers there. Yes. And they were talking about the influence of float builders from Via Reggio. Now, he's hiding something here, okay? <laughs> uh, and that, that, that is his grandfather who was one of the great captains of Rex, Darwin Fenner, hired young Blaine Kern to go to Via Reggio. And uh, Blaine Kern studied the float building uh, techniques there. And so that was a very important thing that he did. And you saw that reflected uh, in some of the early parades after Blaine Kern came back. All these figures that do like that, you know, with the eyes of Lincoln and the, and the hands doing that, okay? And so that's a part of fact. I have a theory I want to add to this, though. The Via Reggio, okay, Rex started in 1872. The Via Reggio Mardi Gras started in 1873, mm. so Rex was actually older. I think there was probably communication between the two. Back then, the people in Via Reggio they had boats going back and forth, heard about what was going on in New Orleans, and I think there was that communication, because they're really contemporaries at the same time. And so I think Via Reggio learned from New Orleans, and then New Orleans came back and learned from Via Reggio. I love this. Well, we're so excited, because now we are about to move over to the other side and we are going to visit Comus. Comus, mystic crew of Comus. And Comus is Errol, as you pointed out, is not a king. He is a god. And we'll be moving over to the other ball right across the street uh, shortly. But uh, we're talking about the oldest uh, organization in Carnival. And, and here is the scrim, the mysterious scrim, where uh, the curtain will pull away and you will see Comus on his throne. He is always anonymous. This seems, it's very dark, but trust me, he's there. You can see him glittering, can't you? Uh, and with his cup, the all-seeing, the all all-knowing cup, if you will. <laughs> uh, Comus, of course, started in 1857. There had been miscellaneous parades at Mardi Gras in New Orleans, but nothing that lasted. Comus began with lasted. Uh, his parade, and it really established the, temple, the template for the Carnival and Carnival uh, This, is, this is the moment that so many people have been waiting for tonight. People love to see the dancing heads over at Comus. <laughs> and, and there's some um, history back in the mythology of the dancing heads. Is that right, Errol? Yes. Uh, Absolutely, but, but, but also in the, uh, the, the artistry of the time, that the people who were finding these crews really liked art and design and experimentation. And so they... Uh, they really like doing that sort of thing, and it, and it kind of went away from Carnival for a while. And gladly, I'm, I'm glad to see we're bringing it back, you know. Uh, uh, Comus keeps it, and Rex has begun more into it. Now, my understanding is that the gentlemen who get to wear those heads are some of the newbies, the, the newer members of the crew, and so this is sort of an initiation, if you will, as well. well those are heavy. That would, that would make sense, because if you look at the way that they get around that dance floor, like I say, they're clearly not the older members of the organization. No, 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 no they, are, they certainly are not. They certainly are not. But um, notice the cup, once again, fo beautiful foster awning canvas uh, below, uh, and then the, the logo, if you will, uh, the symbol of Comus is that cup, which we'll talk a little bit more about. But, uh, you know, the ball's still going on here. It is starting to wind down, but there's still music by Jimmy Maxwell and his orchestra. And then you'll be hearing Robert Maxwell leading the, uh, the uh, group right across the street. Hey, isn't that one? That's just getting started because we have the really big moment here because we're going to uh, see the, the famous meeting of the courts um, between Rex and Comus. We'll see some of the activity on the Comus side. And then the, the grand finale of Mardi Gras is when they close the curtain on Mardi Gras. And, and, and we're going to see that, too. And plus, we're going to hear the... Uh, 
the wonderful Grand March uh, from Aida. And so the, the, this part of the presentation is, is, is really one of my favorite parts. And so the, the crowd's moving over now. A lot of the Rex people have moved on the other side. I can tell you some of the Rex people have stopped at the bars along the way. Uh, there's uh, bars here in the hotel. But uh, if, if you want to see culture, watch this in terms of what's coming. And we are fortunate enough to meet the Queen of Columbus. Um, we're once again, going over to the other side of Canal Street, and we look forward to introducing you uh, to her. And that is, of course, Laura Morgan Butcher. Here she is. And she is the daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Kimberlin Price Butcher, and she is attending the University of Alabama. And a business major, you'll hear more about her a little bit later, but also she um, has high honors with the University of Alabama's Co Honors College and Administrative Director of Kappa Kappa Gamma. But um, her mom was queen in 1991, uh, Helen Hardy Martin Nolte Butcher, <laughs> and lots of past relatives um, uh, that were part of Rex and Comus. What, what I think is really neat about the 1991 situation is that, yes, her mom was the queen of Comus, and her mom's twin sister was the queen of Carnival. And so that you just don't see that very often. Not at, not at all. Yeah, and, and the pin, their queen's pin, ref reflects that. And we'll show you a little bit of that later on in the profile. And the fact that, actually, Miss Butcher herself is a twin. She, uh, she has a twin brother. She's a fraternal twin. So, And notice the lily of the valley. The beautiful lily of the valley um, jewelry, which belongs to the crew, that is uh, their symbolic flower as well. And we'll be meeting the maids shortly too. Uh, but um, when you hear the music, know that it's another Mr. Maxwell <laughs> uh, behind it all, Robert. This one. Well, say, but the thing about the um, the meeting of the courts, this is a true tradition that began in 1882. Um, Rex had had its ball, you know, th th since 1873. Comus was a little bit later in starting a carnival ball. But in 1882, something happened that somebody said, hey, why don't we have Rex come over and meet Comus? Now, they were in two different buildings. Um, Rex was uh, at the... Uh, uh, on St. Charles Avenue, the... Yes, uh, the Washington Artillery Yeah, the, the Washington uh, Artillery. Um, Comus was in the French Opera House. But that night, uh, they had the ball, and then Rex got in their carriages, and, and, and they went to meet Comus. I think what happened is that that would have been the 10th anniversary of Rex, okay? And probably they wanted to do something special to, to celebrate. And, um, and, and so, hence the beginning of that tradition. We're excited, though. I'm sorry to interrupt just okay. for a second because we've got the crossing now that we can show you of Rex and his court. And just moments ago, the Rex court walked across the Story Canal Street to the Marriott Hotel, the location of the Comus Ball, a tradition since 1882. There they are across the street. Notice the red carpet for our special guests. And their trains have been carefully removed for the Good crossing. Good point. <laughs> They're moving much faster, right? <laughs> and that's Sandy Villery, the ball chairman on the right, Christy Brown on the left. Now, for the longest time, the tradition was at the municipal auditorium, and the auditorium had two ballrooms. And uh, Rex was in the larger ballroom, and Comus was in the second. And so, for Rex to go meet Comus, all they had to do was go walk down this back hall. Yes. But then, when the auditorium was closed, then it became something uh, different. Now they're two different buildings across the street from each other. Absolutely. And now we get to meet, though, the maids of Comus. And first up, we have Miss Lucy Sawyer Bryan, and she is the daughter of Mr. and Mrs. James Randolph Bryan. And she is uh, at the University of Virginia. She's a senior there. And her sisters, Margaret Ann and Virginia Bryan, were both in past Comus courts in 2018. There, and there is Miss Mathilde Kanami Kandak, and she is the daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Sean Kehoe Kandak, and she's on the, uh, the uh, dean's list at Vanderbilt University. She's a senior in economics, and her mother was a queen in 1986, Carolyn Burtson Krusel, and her sister, uh, Emily, was made 2019. Mrs. Cecilia Elizabeth Cook, daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Michael Patrick Cook, and she is a senior at the University of Alabama, and uh, her younger brother, William Lyons Cook, is a past Comus page. 
and she's majoring in psychology with a minor in business and management communications. And next up is Catherine Mills Ellis, and she is the daughter of Mr. and Mrs. William Connor Ellis III. She is a junior at TCU, and she studied abroad last uh, spring, and she hopes to move to Washington, D.C. after graduation. She was in Pirates, she was Queen, and Squires and Apollo. And next up, Anne Jameson Hardy, and she's the daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Scott Davis Hardy, and she is at the College of Charleston. She's a senior in sociology, and previous balls include Les Perrettes. She was also a queen. Apollo, Twelfth Night, and she was the queen of Atlanteans this year. And Miss uh, Mason Ann Metz, she's the daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Charles Frederick Metz, and she's at Vanderbilt. She's a senior. And she plans to uh, actually work in New York City as an investment banking analyst. And she was in Squires, La Perez, Apollo, Osiris, Le Debut, and Debutante Club. And Constance Gresham Brooke Overby, the daughter of Mr. and Mrs. John Carl Overby. And she is at Fashion Institute of Technology in New York, now at LSU. She served there before. She's majoring in textile design, and her cousin Kelly Wright Swanson was a maid of Comus in 2015. Miss Eleanor Kehoe Provosti, daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Michael Oliver. Otis Provosti Jr., she is a senior at the University of Miami. And her um, and Andre Provosti Hickey was 1953 queen. And the list is long in terms of Comus connections there. And Ashley Holmes Schwing, and she is rather Ainsley, and she is the daughter of Mr. and Mrs. John Blakemore Schwing. And she is at uh, University of Georgia. She's a senior, majoring in nutritional science. And her brother, John Blakemore Schwing, Jack was a Comus page, and cousin was a Comus maid. And next up is Julie Tyler Smith, daughter, stepdaughter and daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Timothy Justin Young, and daughter and stepdaughter of Mr. and Mrs. Charles Smith, Mr. Charles George Smith, Jr., and she is at Notre Dame, majoring in neuroscience. And um, in terms of Comus family, Miss Ancock Stewart, a relative, was queen in 2012. And that is our court for Comus. And we are awaiting what we've been waiting for all night, the meeting of the courts of Rex and Comus, as Errol said, 1882, a very historic tradition. And it is, it's about tradition, isn't it? Well, as it I is. said, it would, it would have been the 10th anniversary of Rex. It would have also been like the, uh, I think the 25th anniversary of Comus or something too. And so both of them had anniversaries that day. So you can see them getting together. But, but what I was trying to say is that Rex that year was um, Mayor Shakespeare, and uh, so he was Rex and, and Mayor. So he wouldn't have the power to be able to pull this all together, especially in terms of blocking the streets and getting the carriages to hurry over from one place to the other. From what I understand, it happened, the ball, the Rex ball ran really late, and they did it kind of late at night, having, having the meeting in the courts. So. Uh, well, we get to meet the pages on uh, Thomas Cameron Gilly, and he is the son of Mr. and Mrs. Thomas Cameron Gilly. And um, he is at Trinity Episcopal School. He's in the fifth grade. And then right next to him is George, Master George Moore Gilly the third, and they are cousins, and he is the, their sons of Mr. and Mrs. He is the son of Mr. and Mrs. George Moore Gilly Jr. First cousins, and they each have two sisters, so they're the boys that get together, and they are so happy to be <laughs> jointly on the court this year. Sorry to interrupt. And he, that's all right, and he's uh, a fourth grader at Stewart Hall. And then we also had, there we go. <laughs> And I think they're like, they're waiting, they're waiting. And we, you know, I'd asked them about their, um, the wigs, and one of the pages told me it was itchy. It was, it's very itchy, because they had to do a preliminary try-on for it. They're very bright-eyed tonight, though. They're doing great. <laughs> and we'll meet the other pages a little bit later, because I think we've got something going on right now. This is the captain. This is the first time we're seeing the captain of the coma side. And here are our Trumpers once again, Todd and Barney. And it is time for the meeting of the courts of Rex and Comus. And keep an eye on the Comus captain, because as we point out, this is, uh, he gradually takes the charge of the remains of Mardi Gras. And uh, we are hearing the uh, 
if ever I cease to love in the background as the meeting of, of as the meeting of courts takes place here. And now as Comus will raise his cup to, to meet Rex and his queen. And this is the meeting of the courts, officially when he officially raises the cup. Officially the meeting of the courts. That's a very Comus special Comus and moment. his queen and Rex and his queen. And in the middle and in charge of all of it, the Comus captain. This is a, a very well choreographed movement. They really uh, it's handed down through the years. We don't know who developed it per se, but it's a. Uh, and the tradition of, of, of setting the monarchs in a particular place for the ceremonial march is very important to the whole the whole mystique of it all, isn't it? Yes. And so yes, now we go through the process of the uh, the Queen of Carnival and uh, Comus uh, meeting one another to march, uh, as well as the uh, Rex and the Queen of Comus. And we're hearing, if ever I cease to love, the anthem of Carnival as part of this march. If ever I cease to love started off as a, an English burlesque song uh, from a uh, burlesque by Lydia Thompson that happened to be in performing in New Orleans, and they adopted it. And through the years, it's been made into a march to uh, uh, was performing in New Orleans in 1872 at, at the first. Yeah, race. actually, right. she performed here before that too. Right. Um, so the uh, the people in Rex at the time would have been familiar with her and would have filled the song. Notice Comus's mask. Uh, it's very mysterious, but most of the time, Comus is smiling. My understanding is that mask was made in France, and the tri plume is certainly a signature of Comus. And as we said earlier, Comus is in silver, Rex and his queen in gold. And they're serious about the idea, uh, in, in keeping with the carnival tradition, about the identity being kept secret. A lot, of, a lot of carnival organizations have like a, you know, well, the monarchs are secret, but everybody knows who they are. But Comus is a secret. Uh, that even at the rehearsal, Peg, you say, go to the rehearsal, they have a stand-in. Oh, yes, they have a stand-in for uh, Comus. At the rehearsal, <laughs> like, somebody like Will might know who he is, okay? I, uh, I do not. Uh, can I have we, can we pitch no you? Clue. <laughs> That's above my pay grade. <laughs> That's above your pay. <laughs> we have a profile on the uh, Comus Queen a little bit later, and delightful, delightful, very thoughtful young lady. Anyway, when Comus started in 1857, uh, you know, we hear about the Mobile attachment, that there were some people from Mobile who were part of, of uh, sorting Comus, but they were really living in New Orleans, and ultimately it was New Orleans that became the real influence in the way Carnival was celebrated. But Comus, like, they created the word crew the way we know it, uh, and uh, they, they just created a lot of the traditions. Like I said, to say, all the Carnival parades from Alla to Zulu really influenced by what, what, what Coma started. Back to the plumes, which I find very intriguing on the top of, of Comus's uh, headpiece. The history of the three plumes actually has its derivation from the Battle of Cressy in the year 1346. Um, it dates back uh, that long. But the motto of King John, who was part of, of this, signifying I serve, and the crest and motto were later taken by the Prince of Wales in remembrance of that famous day 
of war and has been borne by the Prince of Wales ever since. So if it looks familiar, it's the Prince of Wales logo as well. Okay, e, what okay, are we about to hear? What are we about okay, to hear? We're about to hear the Grand March from Aida. This is just stirring, okay? This march was created uh, to commemorate the opening of the Suez Canal, and the ruler of Egypt uh, commissioned it. And it made its debut, uh, I think commissioned Giuseppe Verdi, it made its debut in Cairo in 1871. So the year before Rep started. So this march in Rex are pretty much contemporaries. Uh, and it became just a really famous opera march. Now, it was a few years before it got to New Orleans, though, but they are of the same time. And then, um, ultimately, it, 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 it was performed in Cairo before it was in Milan, which is, it was written for, but they didn't feel it was quite ready for Milan. But the links between, first of all, Cairo and New Orleans are in the same parallel. I mean, if you look on, 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 you know, on the globe, and that you have this march, which I think has such a, a link between the two. It's a beautiful piece of music. Look how beautiful this march is, with the Comus maids and Comus lieutenants and the Rex maids and the Rex dukes, with the, the Queen of Carnival with Comus and with yeah. the King of Carnival with the Queen of Comus. It just, this is, this is it. This is... Well, Errol, following in the tradition of our friend Henri Schindler, I think you have a little something you wanted to share. Yes, uh, as long as we've been doing this, this broadcast, we talk about this uh, book uh, uh, called The Mystic Crew. It was uh, published in 1931. Uh, the, the Comus organization had commissioned this book, and they hired a, a local journalist named Perry Young. Uh, and and it's, it's really it's a history of Mardi Gras at that time. It's a very useful research uh, piece of research material. But I remember, like, as a college student, like, being in the school library and looking at the book and opening it up, like, to the first page and reading this introduction. And that's all I needed was the introduction <laughs> up there. And I was stuck. But anyway, uh, this is called The Butterfly of, of Winter, and it's by uh, Perry Young and the Mystic Crew. It says, Carnival is the Butterfly of Winter whose last mad flight of Mardi Gras forever ends his glory. Another season is the glory of another butterfly, and the tattered, scattered fragments of rainbow wings are in turn the record of his day. And the more I think about it, those tattered, scattered rainbow wings, that's what we're talking about now. I mean, uh, those were the records of the day of the past, but, you know, next year there's a new butterfly. And, uh, and they'll be making new memories, and they'll be leaving more wings in the past. But I just thought it's a beautiful piece of writing, and that, that butterfly motif has been incorporated in a lot of things, including in, in Rex, where we see the butterfly uh, uh, king float. Well, we very much embrace the fact that Rex is itself a butterfly of winter, and that uh, for 364 days of the year, the floats are being stripped and whited out and sketched upon and painted and created from scratch in its, in its cocoon and it comes out for one very brief period, one day of the year, uh, and is shown off in great splendor and glory, the beautiful artwork that has gone into it to the people of, uh, of New Orleans and its visitors, and then goes back into its den and, um, uh, and dies. Um, and it's, it's something to fathom all of the time and effort and artwork and expense that goes into doing that, but it's part of what makes it so ephemeral and special as well. And it does leave fragments of rainbow wings. Literally leaves scattered, tattered <laughs> fragments everywhere. Some dangling from trees, <laughs> some clogging storm drains. Uh oh. <laughs> well, if I was very young the night that was written, I would just stop right there. I, would say, <laughs> I retire. This is it. Yeah, but here's another for me special moment because all the monarchs are on the throne, the sceptering moment. Yes, okay, sceptering is, is a verb commonly known in New Orleans, <laughs> very is. few other places. This is true. And there are people who teach it to the monarchs throughout the year. All right. Let's do it. That's the shot. 
Shortly, we will show you the other two pages we didn't get to prior to. But now, there's also going to be general dancing. And the courts um, actually get to dance a little bit, too. So you'll see that. And it's the Jolly Coppersmith is, is the song. This has been a perennial favorite. They always play the Jolly Coppersmith. The only time you ever hear this song is right here. Uh -huh. But it is jolly. It's very jolly. It's very jolly. And we have the other two pages here. Samuel Parkinson McHenry Jr. And he is the son of Mr. and Mrs. Samuel Parkinson McMurray McHenry. And uh, he is in fifth grade at Trinity Episcopal. Actually, we're not yet. <laughs> we were premature of that. All right. We'll find him in just a moment. Okay, that's all right. But once again, you see the contrast of the gold and the silver here. So with all this is leading to, and it won't be too long from now, uh, this really moving moment when the uh, reps lieutenants and the Coleman's lieutenants get together and they really bring down the curtain literally on Mardi Gras. Um, by that time, Coleman's and Rex will have left and so they're leaving it in the hands of the lieutenants and the captain um, and, and, and the Coleman's captain. We should point out the, the, that uh, Coleman's, of course, is known um, due to a myth. He is a god and um, he is someone who rules a forest, a mythical forest. And if you come into the forest and you taste of his cup, you are very likely uh, going to be turned into some kind of beast. So you don't want a sip of what Comus is having, but it's, it's not um, a scepter, is it? It's, it's a cup. It's very important to distinguish. Perhaps some sort of evil liquid that we don't something know about. Like that, anyway. Something like that, something like that. There, I think we see the other two pages on the right side. And just as uh, members of the organization paid homage to the royalty on the rec side, this is happening right now um, on the coma side. Even the heads. <laughs> All right, I think we have got them now. Mr. James, here we go. Let's once again, Samuel Parkinson McHenry Jr. and the son of Mr. and Mrs. Samuel Parkinson McHenry, and, and, and attends Trinity Episcopal School, and he's in the fifth grade. And then we also have James Bush Le Bourgeois, and he is the son of Mr. and Mrs. Michael Livaday Le Bourgeois. And he is in the fourth grade attending Isidore Newman School. And he said when he was asked to be a page, he was really confused. It was New Year's Day, and he was happy, but he, it had to be explained to him, what does a page do? <laughs> and uh, and uh, he certainly learned that. <laughs> and I asked him, what's he going to be doing later this week? And he says, well, he's hoping he's going to go fishing. So that'll be his treat after being a page. His mother was queen of carnival. I want to say in 1995, maybe. And there is Nell, Nell Nolan, Nolan in beautiful blue. The one who will be covering all of this. Yes, and I think she's probably busy doing that right now, yeah. actually. Sister and I see the Duncan. The 50 year uh, queen. Yes, yes. And 
and you know, with any ball, of course, there's invitations. And we have some beautiful show and tell here we'd like to share with you. And this goes back, you see the theme here, you see the bees. Actually, what happened was in 1991, when our current queen's mom was queen, the insect kingdom was the theme in 91. So they're recreating that. Um, isn't it beautiful? And then, um, even though Comus no longer parades, they do strike a bloom. That's part of the invitation to the admit guard. Look at look at the moth and the butterfly. Part of the insect kingdom. And there's the Comus de bloom, which depicts um, the theme, the insect kingdom. There you are. And they um, have them in both a silver color and a gold color. 1857. There you go. The golden cup of Comus. And um, of course, there is the Comus Favor, which also reflects our theme, the bee, uh, made by uh, through Adler's. Tiffany Adler, speaking of a bee, a busy bee, <laughs> my understanding is uh, over the course of a year, she actually uh, she designs and initiates the process of over 50 different pins throughout the year. And it really is a staple of Carnival to see all the different pins being worn by the ladies around town uh, during the, uh, the Carnival season. Yes. It's a lot of fun. And also, Comus uh, himself has his own personal pin, and that is a salamander, which is a symbol of um, the French King Francois the first and that was actually embedded the design of it was embedded in one of the fireplaces at his castle so hmm the hmm. story on that there okay. must be a clue in there somewhere and the yeah. salamander only likes to come out in bad weather and he retreats in good weather so if anybody can put together the pieces of the puzzle maybe his, <laughs> have name, is, maybe his name is Sal maybe his name is Sal <laughs> that's right but it's the dragon. Now, this is really fun because this is the, pers the queen's personal pin. And uh, this is based on a pin that ha contained both the logo of, uh, of Comus and Rex in 1991 when um, Helen and her sister were queens of Carnival and Comus at the same time. So they're utilizing that design, this wonderful banner ribbony effect. The twin pin, did they call that? The twin pin. <laughs> the twin pin. <laughs> Yeah, so very nice. And memories of being the queen of commerce are indelibly etched for some young ladies and are made even more personal when they are shared. Here is my interview with this year's queen of commerce, Laura Morgan Butcher. Laura Morgan Butcher, daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Kimberlyn Price Butcher, is a senior at the University of Alabama, majoring in marketing with a double minor in sales and computing tech and applications. A dinner with family members held a big surprise. I found out I would be queen right after my spring break in March. My mom told me we were going to dinner with my grandparents and they came over right before and my mom said she had a video to show me. The video included photos of her mother, Helen Nolte Butcher, who was the queen of Comus in 1991, and of Laura's twin brother, who was a Comus page. The last part of the video had a question from Helen asking Laura if she would be the queen of Comus in 2023. And that's how we sprung this on Laura. For this year's Queen of Comus, childhood Mardi Gras memories are vivid. During the days leading up to Mardi Gras Day, we would go to the corner of Perry and Napoleon with friends and family. We would all sit and stand on ladders and wait for our dads to pass by on either horses or floats. And it was fun to be with just all my friends waiting for our dads. While in college, Miss Butcher has found time to volunteer. One of her commitments was especially fulfilling. My second semester sophomore year, through my accounting class, we had the opportunity to participate in a youth tutor program with an elementary school in Birmingham. We would get on Zoom and I would help them with their homework, answer questions through the books they were reading, and help with any questions they may have. This debutante season has been an active one. This season I was presented in Twelfth Night, Atlanteans, Momus, presented as a Deb and Mystic, and Proteus. In addition to her mother and brother, the family's carnival connections are strong. My cousin Lane Nalsi was a maid in Comus in 2018, and I've had family members participate dating back to 1898 when Isabel Hardy was queen of Comus. 
One of these connections proved to be especially useful in the design of this year's gown. Katie Johnson from Royal Design House is making my dress. I knew it wanted to have a lot of meaning behind it with my family, and so we've been working with how to incorporate that with flowers and what past family dresses have looked like. This year, Comas has a new collar designed by Royal House Design. They have incorporated the Comas flower, Lily of the Valley, and hand beaded the design and the majestic collar that Laura will be wearing with her dress. This year's Queen of Comas will step into some very fancy slippers. The dress designer added appliques to the shoes that you will also see on my dress. And of course, there is the royal jewelry. The scepter and crown that Laura will be wearing Mardi Gras night is the same scepter and crown that I wore in 1991. And those two pieces we took out of retirement. On the scepter and crown, there's small lilies of the valley that shine during the night when it catches the light, has a little shimmer. Traditionally, the Queen of Comus presents a personally designed pin to her friends and family. The mother of this year's Comus Queen and her sister's experience as royalty of both Comus and Rex in the same year, a first, proved to be an inspiration. Their parents came up with a unique idea. They designed the pen along with Tiffany Adler with the Comas plumes and the Rex logo representing each of us. And today, working with Tiffany at Adler's, we took the Comas portion of the twin pen and designed a personal pen for Laura. And on top of it all, our current queen is a twin, as is her mother. For this year's Queen of Comus, the season has been even more enjoyable since she and this year's Queen of Carnival, Eveline Finlay Gamilla, know each other. This year's Queen of Carnival and I grew up together. We would go to the park after school and play with all of our brothers. And I'm so excited to share this night with her. And now it's time to thank those who have made tonight's broadcast possible. Funding for the Rex Ball and the meeting of the courts of Rex and Comus is made possible through generous community support. There's no place like New Orleans at Mardi Gras. At First Horizon, we are excited to keep finding ways to support the city. This uniquely New Orleans celebration and special broadcasts on WYES-TV that capture the heart of our city. Mr. and Mrs. Michael Bright White are proud to support WYS and this broadcast of the Rex Bowl and wishes everyone a happy Mardi Gras. Hail Rex! Dreams. Dreams keep us growing. Dreams keep us thriving. Dreams keep us believing in the power of teamwork. Hancock Whitney, your dream, our mission. Mr. and Mrs. William F. Grace Jr. are proud to support this broadcast of the Rex Ball and the Meeting of the Courts and all of the other quality programs on WYS. Hail Rex, hail Comus, and happy Mardi Gras. Cap Trust, Bespoke High Net Worth, Family Office, and Institutional Investment Services. More information is at captrust.com. Support is provided by the law firm of Jones Walker, established in 1937 with offices throughout the U.S., providing a comprehensive range of legal services to a wide range of local, regional, national, and international client base. Online at joneswalker.com. The Rink, a unique collection of shops and select offices located in the heart of the Garden District. Ample parking available. The Rink, a historic space with a modern vision. Brennan's Restaurant offers modern interpretations of classic Creole cuisine served in Brennan's elegant dining rooms. Brennan's in the French Quarter, 417 Royal Street. Hello, I'm Emmett Dupas, lead partner at Bienville Capital Group, where we specialize in finding solutions to help companies and their employees reach their financial goals. Dawn Services would like to hail Rex and is proud to support this special program. Additional support by Bellwether Technology. 
The Condwell Family Foundation and Felix's Restaurant and Oyster Bar, where oyster lovers can belly up to the bar. Experience small home retirement living through Poitras Home Reimagined and the Greenhouse Project. Fidelity Bank, celebrating 115 years of service. Hail Rex, hail Comas, happy Mardi Gras. And we're back at the Comas Ball. Uh, it's hard to believe, but the ball is almost over. <laughs> um, we will be awaiting uh, the departure of, of both courts. But Air, you wanted to point out what else we have coming up. Well, the big closing moment, of course, is uh, when we when they bring down the curtain on Mardi Gras, and it's really you watch this and you learn a lot about the kind of like the structure of Carnival because when the when the monarchs leave and who's in charge, and by this time uh, um, even the Rex captain's left, and, and, and it's the Comus captain uh, who's in charge and kind of like leads the uh, the ceremony of closing the curtains. And you know, it all started with Comus, you know, with the first parade and all that. So they kind of um, ends with I guess, that bit of ceremonial power. But uh, I think it's very impressive. And the other thing is that in the last few years, I can't guarantee it's going to happen, but we'll see, that right before Rex leaves the ballroom, he's done some kind of gesture, right? Like one year there was a Rex who was uh, known for like in baseball. He did like he was uh, he had a baseball bat or something like that, you know. And so it's kind of fun to see if they could do some kind of gesture. Not guaranteed, uh, but maybe they maybe they will. What a nice shot though, as far as all the color. Right? It's so it's so colorful. Yes. Yep. That, that, that's the cue. It's time to clear the floor. Uh, yes, and, and it's very interesting because both are very, uh, both settings are very palatial, but they both have their own identity as well. You've Absolutely. got chandeliers, but you've got the larger chandeliers, and um, the Spangenberg family has been uh, had been really involved for many, many years in all this, and a descendant is, is now still involved with it. And the production crew has done a great job of just picking up great shots all night long. Uh, you know, really catching the coloring, getting things like that. I'd mentioned the um, the Perry Young book, The Mystic Crew. I don't know if it's available anymore, like on eBay, or if this is a 1931 book. But it's an important book, but if you can ever see it, like in a library or something, uh, it has a lot of those kind of illustrations in there, and I'm sure th that's what inspired those uh, those illustrations. But those are from the early days of uh, of, uh, of Comus. You know, those early days, there's a lot of emphasis on on artistry, even in the parade. Uh, the uh, the footage that Will found about the early Rex parade in 1898. If you look at that, you don't see people waving for bees or throwing. They're looking at the parade. Uh, there were the, there was something visual to see, and, and so there was really uh, high emphasis on the visual, not as much on the catching throws and things. And we still try to maintain that with the artwork that goes into the uh, the floats and the way that they are uh, constructed, uh, fabricated. Uh, we really want to preserve that uh, old art form. Most people see past it to the riders and the uh, and the throws, but uh, but those who really you know, do appreciate Carnival, are looking at the floats and just taking in the, the beauty that they represent. Well, it's just something that the Rex organization calls itself the School of Design. Exactly. So that's an emphasis right there. Note the lieutenant's costumes. We're not talking purple, green, and gold exclusively. We're talking blue and red. I, I like the variety of the color. the captain. Everybody has to clear the way for the departure here.
Well, I know we remember the days of <coughs> um, both balls being at the auditorium. And it was much easier to do the crossing there, <laughs> just a few yards. <laughs> just go down the hall. Huh? Yeah. And the auditorium was shut down for a couple of years. It uses a temporary casino uh, when they were building Harris. And so during that time, I think it was, called the, it was done at the Fairmont. Fairmont. The Fairmont. And the first time we did this ball, it was in the Fairmont. Uh, and they were both. Both Coleman and Rex were in the same hotel, <laughs> uh, and then when they had to move, when they moved, when Rex moved to the Sheraton, and then the, the Comus went to the Marriott. This would be the Comus captain, so just watch him these next few minutes because he's in charge now. Those four pages. It's hard enough to get two monarchs onto a throne, let alone four, and off. <laughs> All of the crowd silhouette shot across the bottom. I think it's, <laughs> it's fun. Now, what's a little unusual is you would think Thomas, as the host, would leave last, but that's not so, is it, Al? Yeah, it's a strange protocol. What do you do when you have a king and a god? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but, well, you're, but you're in the god's house. I like to say that they want to be the first ones at the party. <laughs> <laughs> Raising of the cup of comas, my understanding is throughout the evening that is done a total of three times. So that's something to follow for next year. <laughs> Miss Butcher, gorgeous queen. I'd love to see just how quickly these trains get scooped up as she moves <laughs> off the dance floor. And assisted by her dad. Good time. <laughs> His mask looks like it's smiling more than usual. He's jovial. Yeah, sometimes they have varying degrees of expressions on their mask. Mm -hmm. uh, usually it's some sort of smile, but it could be a big smile or a little smile. Yeah. Yeah.
Carol, like you, I love it when Rex does that final little, last year it was a salute, that last little gesture, whether it's a tennis racket or a baseball bat or something entirely different. It really has become a, a fun tradition. Hopefully it will continue this year. But we never know for sure, so we're... <laughs> It's like the identity of Columbus. We don't know. scepter. Very A grateful. sign of gratitude. Yeah. Very nice. He talked about humility. I mean, I think he finds, he's very humble by this honor to him. This is a great scene, too. The two captains. The yeah, both of these captains. captains are relatively new on the job. The Rex captain is his second year, and Comas is his first year. Or, or second. You know, that would explain why he looks taller <laughs> looks and taller. skinnier <laughs> than last year. All right, here we go. Rex captain has been on the scene a bit longer than, than yeah. that. And this is really what we've all been waiting for. I keep saying that, but it is. It's the closing of the curtain. Literally and figuratively. This one looks like a new curtain. I don't remember yeah. it being blue. Oh, Mardi Gras 2023. Yes. Look at that. Going, all going, right. gone. And next Love to year, see that. Mardi Gras is? It's on February 13th, 2024, <laughs> the day before Valentine's Day. And is that day meaningful to you? It, it kind of sort of is, because it's my birthday. So <laughs> also, I'll have extra fun. February 13th, 1872 was the day of the first Rex Parade. Oh, so, first, really, yeah. you know. And speaking of Rex, Will, I know that you wanted to, uh, of course, share some very exciting historical images for us. Man, you've got something special. Well, you're going to have to just let me nerd out for a okay, few minutes here. Okay, go right ahead. So, a few weeks ago, we uncovered, uncovered more of what I call buried treasure. Uh, until now, the earliest known photograph of the Rex Parade was from 1887. Well, recently, a good friend of the Rex organization, Mr. Patrick O'Kane of the McGlinchey Law Firm, found on eBay a stereoscopic view of a very early parade on Canal Street. Now, let's take a look. Two things caught Mr. O'Kane's eye. One was the Rex flag, seen hanging from a flagpole on the balcony above. Second, there were no artistic floats as we would expect to see in most old Rex photos. Only a boat on a rolling platform and a strange looking cistern or tent trailing behind. Here's where it gets interesting. In 1873, a young architect by the name of Benjamin J. Goodman, so enamored with what he'd seen of the very first Rex parade in 1872, positioned himself with his trusty sketchbook and drew by hand each element of the 1873 parade as it passed him by. Well, if we zoom in on the last two illustrations in the Goodman sketchbook, lo and behold, we see a boat on wheels and the very same strange cistern. If we compare the high resolution versions of the Goodman book and the stereoscope, we can see that the boat is a match. Furthermore, we can read on the side of the boat as illustrated by Mr. Goodman, the writing Salver of New Orleans. A uh, Salver is a ship used in salvage operations. Well, one of our good friends, and by the way, there's a whole committee of amateur sleuths who get excited when a hunt like this gets going, found an article that appeared in the Daily Missouri Republican on March 1st, 1873, explaining how a ship from St. Louis with the inscription Salver of New Orleans on its broadside took part in the procession of King Rex, thereby conclusively dating the O'Kane stereoscope to the 1873 Rex Parade. By the way, a special thanks to Mr. O'Kane, who has generously donated the stereoscope for preservation and display. 
Wow, what's sleuthing? That's really something. <laughs> <laughs> now, now look, Peg, Errol, there are only a handful of people uh, who think that finding old carnival images like this are more fun than finding actual buried treasure. And I can <laughs> promise you that they are all watching this evening somewhere in this ballroom or are sitting at this table. Uh, it, with the 1898 film that we uncovered earlier uh, over the summer, and now this 1873 photograph, it really has been a wonderful year for our archives. As I like to say, the Mardi Gras gods have been smiling on us this year, and we hope it keeps going. There's more out there in trunks and attics, and it takes people like Mr. O'Kane and other viewers like you to go out and find it. So please, everyone, keep searching for that Mardi Gras gold. That gets us very excited, <laughs> being, a, I guess, a Mardi Gras nerd. <laughs> so very exciting. Congratulations, though. That's Thank really you. great news. It's a lot of fun. And now, believe it or not, <laughs> here's our third and final Carnival Quiz question. And now our final carnival quiz question. How many plumes adorn the top of Comus's headpiece? Our prizes. A two-night stay for two at the Four Seasons Hotel New Orleans on Canal Street. Your visit includes daily breakfast for two and is valued at $1,500. Valid March 1st, 2023 until March 1st, 2024. Donated by the Four Seasons Hotel New Orleans. Two winners will receive a pair of tickets to View Orleans, the interactive cultural experience located atop the Four Seasons Hotel and featuring 360-degree indoor and outdoor observation decks donated by View Orleans. A hand-painted glass buff gras ornament designed exclusively for Adlers and donated by Adlers. A king cake necklace and pin donated by the historic New Orleans collection. A copy of the book, Rex, 150 Years of the School of Design by Dr. Stephen Hales, published by Arthur Hardy Enterprises and donated by the School of Design. A copy of the 2023 Rex Proclamation by artist Henry Gesell, donated by the Rex Organization. A copy of the 2023 Rex Parade Bulletin with illustrations by Caroline Thomas, also donated by the Rex Organization. A copy of the book Mardi Gras Chronicles of the New Orleans Carnival by Errol Laborde, published by Pelican Publishing. A copy of the book New Orleans Mardi Gras Moments by photographer Judy Batoni and me, Peggy Scott Laborde, and published by Pelican and a DVD of this broadcast. You can email your answers to carnivalquiz at wies.org, or you can mail in your entry to Carnival Quiz, WYES TV, 916 Navarre Avenue, New Orleans, Louisiana, 70124. The deadline for us to receive the entries is Monday, February 27th at 5 p.m. The entries must contain the correct answers to all three questions. Please, one entry per person. Those entries will be put into a drawing. The winners will be posted on WYES.org and on the WYES Facebook page the following Monday. They will also be mentioned on WYES's Stepping Out program on Thursday, March 9th at 7 p.m. and repeated on Friday, March 10th at 10.30 p.m. We also welcome your comments about tonight's broadcast. Once again, email us at carnivalquiz at wyes.org. Good luck on the Carnival Quiz. And just a reminder that a copy of tonight's broadcast will be available by calling 504-486-5511 or going online to our WYS online store at WYS.org. The price of the DVD is $19.95. By the way, our broadcast will be repeated in its entirety immediately following the completion of this broadcast. Thank you so much to our own crew this evening, Jim Morrison. 
Moriarty, executive producer, Terry Landry and Barbara Sillery, our coordinating producers. Special thanks to Dominic Masser for so many things. Our director, George Matulik, chief engineer, Fred Barrett, technical director, George Matulik as well, and also the technology director. He does a lot, but we uh, want to also acknowledge Calvin Barrett, who is our technology coordinator. And videographer, Lenny Delbert, senior associate producer, uh, Sophia Bulgarakis Hackett, and production assistant, Sharon Snowdy, and Estelle DeVerges. And special thanks to the School of Design, as well as the Mr. Crew of Comus. Thank you, Errol. <laughs> Thank you, Will, Thank you, Peg. so very much. And thanks to all of you for watching. We now leave you with George Schmidt and the New Leviathan Oriental Foxtrot Orchestra with the Anthem of Carnival, If Ever I Cease to Love. Good night. Good night, everybody. See you next year. Funding for the Rex Ball and the meeting of the courts of Rex and Comus is made possible through generous community support. There's no place like New Orleans at Mardi Gras. At First Horizon, we are excited to keep finding ways to support the city. This uniquely New Orleans celebration and special broadcasts on WYES TV that capture the heart of our city. Mr. and Mrs. William F. Grace Jr. are proud to support this broadcast of the Rex Ball and the Meeting of the Courts and all of the other quality programs on WYS. Hail Rex, hail Comus, and happy Mardi Gras. Mr. and Mrs. Michael Bright White are proud to support WYS and this broadcast of the Rex Ball and wishes everyone a happy Mardi Gras. Hail Rex.
Cap Trust, bespoke high net worth, family office, and institutional investment services. More information is at captrust.com. Dreams. Dreams keep us growing. Dreams keep us thriving. Dreams keep us believing in the power of teamwork. Hancock Whitney, your dream, our mission. Support is provided by the law firm of Jones Walker, established in 1937 with offices throughout the U.S., providing a comprehensive range of legal services to a wide range of local, regional, national, and international client base. Online at joneswalker.com. The Rink, a unique collection of shops and select offices located in the heart of the Garden District. Ample parking available. The Rink, a historic space with a modern vision. Hello, I'm Emma Dupas, lead partner at Bienville Capital Group, where we specialize in finding solutions to help companies and their employees reach their financial goals. Brennan's Restaurant offers modern interpretations of classic Creole cuisine served in Brennan's elegant dining rooms. Brennan's in the French Quarter, 417 Royal Street. Dawn Services would like to hail Rex and is proud to support this special program. Premium Parking has a space for you. Easy and convenient parking all across the city. Find more information on the app or at premiumparking.com. Adler's, honored to be part of New Orleans tradition since 1898. Also brought to you by Arthur J. Gallagher Risk Management Services. Any challenge, any risk, anywhere in the world. Additional support by Bellwether Technology. Chaff McCall, proud to celebrate Carnival and honor the monarchs of Mardi Gras and the tradition of service before self. Fidelity Bank, celebrating 115 years of service. Hail Rex, hail Comas, happy Mardi Gras. Gallo Mechanical, commercial air conditioning and plumbing. Design, build, and service for over 70 years. Gallo Mechanical. Home Care Solutions, compassionate in-home elder care to extend your loved one's independence. The Conwell Family Foundation and Felix's Restaurant and Oyster Bar, where oyster lovers can belly up to the bar. Experience small home retirement living through Poitras Home Reimagined and the Greenhouse Project. Standard Mortgage, helping Louisiana families purchase homes since 1925. Additional funding provided by Jonathan C. McCall and the Galatoire Foundation. 